the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, including the Little Book of John the Revelator, forward. As I write this final forward to the Book of Remembrance series, it is hard to believe it has been over 20 years since we began this process. These books have changed and shaped our community and our people in so many ways. I will always be grateful to have been part of this process. I am a very different person than I was when I began helping to produce the first volume of the sealed portion of the Brother of Jared back in 2001. In many ways, I feel like I have been waiting for the information in this volume all my life. It gives me the long sought after tools and the answers to join fully to the Erekot Ishi as my kindred and family. It used to seem mysterious, and now I know that we were each born to do just that, bond completely with our family in the Erekot Dishi. Now it is not mysterious, but very natural. I have felt the Erekot Dishi waking up, or is it me that is waking up? And I can sense their life and awareness in ways I have never noticed before. They are there and they watch me as I walk about during my day. They wanna be a part of it all. I recently was speaking on the phone to a new friend who was just beginning her journey of studying through these books of remembrance. As we were sharing together, she said, my husband said that he feels like this book was written just for him. As I have typed, edited, read and reread this manuscript, I have had that experience over and over again. I feel like this book was written just for me. So personally does the information apply to my life. It is my prayer that you will have this same experience and feel like this book was written just for you. It was. Blessings to you all in your journey of becoming Shema Chief Scribe. The Introduction. This is the last volume of the Book of Remembrance Library. I began using the Urim a little more than 24 years ago. It is interesting to note how the record of the visions that came by Urim has matured. Not only have I aged, but I have matured in my relationship with the Lord and become more comfortable using the Urim. At the beginning, I had all kinds of pressures on me. I was afraid I could not be worthy to look. I worried that what I might see would bring criticism, but those concerns evaporated when I discovered that I had no control over what was seen. My job was to just try to say something to the scribes that could later be written into something adequately representing what I had seen. What I heard was the easy part. What I felt was often held back in the first two volumes. Over the years, I gradually began to gain confidence in expressing what I felt while viewing with the urn. And I feel like the quality of the record improved as I was able to allow the spirit to help me to express my feelings. Now we have come to the conclusion of this record. It is actually the most long awaited pinnacle of what we would receive because we knew the covenant tablet would bring significant information on the covenant and that the timing was becoming more urgent by the day because of the world conditions. But the Lord is wise and has timed these records coming just in the most needed time. After being a covenant community for so long, it is amazing how much we did not know about the covenant of Shabua. But it is no wonder the covenant has been one of the most fought against spiritual powers since before the time of the flood. And while it took only 11 generations to be originally established, the pathway to doing so was difficult and was done with many contributions by holy people. I often think of how different the world would be had Israel accepted and lived by what is written on this tablet, both in the symbols and the meaning found in the lives of those who brought it about and set it in place. The Essenes came the closest, but they had many disadvantages that were to be overcome. Essenism was primarily brought by Zadok, the scribe and librarian and archivist of Nehemiah. The people were taken into captivity so unexpectedly that many records were abandoned and Zadok collected them. And what he left the world is that which became the Essene expression of Judaism. Now in this book of remembrance, we find many missing links and the full restoration of the ancient church is possible in Shabuah. I am sure the Lord accepts all the forms of religious expression of those who truly love him. 
but there is something remarkably comforting now to have the full message. And while this is not by any means the end of the story, it is the most vital expression yet that will help the Lord's people come through the tribulation times. And I think this is the principal value of this record and why it came when it did. As we progressed over the years in receiving these volumes, it became more and more evident that the Lord gained more control over how the distinct messages were structured. This can be seen by looking at the scribe notes. The scribing for the first book of Aki took 12 sessions. Almost always a session lasts about 45 minutes to an hour. That means just 12 hours resulted in that entire book. The second book of Aki took eight sessions and it was a much smaller book. By the time we got to this volume of the experiences of Melchizedek, we sat before the urn 29 times and this volume is not quite as big as the Book of Remembrance of Enoch. What this means is that the Lord was able to take more and more control of how the messages from the visions were structured. We heard more and more dictation to record, and the record began to express less and less of my human influence. And finally, the little book of John the Revelator at the end was practically dictated word for word. It is hard to even describe just how comforting that was. Being aware of the life and death importance of what is recorded there for those living through the tribulations. The Lord put this volume together in his own way also. This volume, the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, is speaking for the Erko It is a message from their perspective. The Lord knew that this type of perspective was so foreign to the world and in many ways to me that he cautioned me seven times to listen very carefully to what I would be hearing and seeing. I soon got the message to look for the profound and the unexpected, and it turned out that the most difficult question man can attempt to answer was answered in this record. We were shown what part of God his son is and just how he got that way. The Lord revealed exactly how the virgin birth was accomplished and also the resurrection. Both of those things are actual facts and reality. And those of us who have hung on to that faith in the face of ridicule and naysaying have our faith now fully justified. Wow, folks, your love for him and faith in him has become a crown of glory for you, which came by his steadfast and loving hand. We will praise his name forever. And there is so much like that in this book. We have been led to put at the end the little book of John the Revelator, which includes personal counsel from the Lord for his people in the tribulation times. And the voice of the seven thunders that John was not permitted to write are now placed before us. And it has been exciting to learn of the upbringing of Melchizedek and his courtship and marriage. It turns out his wife is an archangel in the next life, and she was called Shun by her family. But the Lord named her Zedekedelebab because of her role in establishing Shabua alongside her husband. And we finally found out the real place for women in religion. It was so startling to me that upon seeing it, I stopped viewing with Urim and told the scribes what I had seen. They were eager for me to go on, so we continued. I am sure that this long hidden revelation caused by bias toward women will be an important milestone for the Lord's people during these end days. The night after our last Urim session, when all the information for this volume on Melchizedek was finished, my guardian angel came to me and held me in the arms of his presence as if to say, well done, little son. I am so grateful to the Lord that he has now brought this record to the world. Ben Elam, the seer, March 2021. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek the Covenant Tablet of Shabua, the Forward and Introduction. Shalom. The Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabua, Chapter 1. With a heart overflowing, I come now to record the vision that comes through Urim and Thorm, as recorded on the Covenant Tablet for more than 35 years now, 
We have had a copy of the covenant tablet that was given to Moses upon Sinai. It may even be a copy of the original and being the scenes, we are a covenant community. So the covenant tablet contains core foundations of our worldview and concept of God and his creation. Before this time, I had only the spirit of God to give me some sense of the meaning contained on it. So I am certain that a view through the eyes of God by Urim will be a great advantage and anything that I had previously thought that I find to be in error will only be an opportunity for repentance and I will act to clarify this vital information. To sit before the Urim is no small matter. So my heart was full as I approached to use it and I have sensed the depth of the meaning of this tablet and have been putting off looking as the Lord was bidding me to do because I have felt unworthy to look but I have been preparing for the past five years, and now the covenant tablet will be the last volume of the Book of Remembrance. And with this stone tablet is a companion covenant tablet, also made of stone and written literally by the finger of God, for it is written on the backside and written within the stone, and it has been called the Little Book by John the Revelator. And from what I know about it thus far, it contains a revelation that is both sweet and bitter and deals with both the wicked and the righteous here in our end of days. And if the Lord leads me, I will include the information contained on it. After I conclude writing what is written upon the covenant tablet proper, and this time there will be five scribes and an apprentice, and we all must approach this effort with full confidence in our forgiveness, as the Urim will only work if we are able to stand clean before the Lord and are fully repentant in all our preparations, so that he is free to forgive us, for we must feel completely forgiven. As I begin, I will briefly describe the tablet. The central figure on the tablet is a perfectly shaped cross, standing on a base with 12 tabs. And in the ancient Hebrew alphabet, a cross is the last letter called a tab. And that letter signifies that something of importance has been identified as an X marks the spot in the case of the cross. It represents that the redeemer of the world is here identified. Reference number one, see photos page 12 and 13. And there are two hands with open palms shown on either side of the top of the cross. And these hands have an eternity symbol in the palms, which is a circle and a dot. And it is significant that the palms have this symbol because of the meaning of the concept of covenanting. And there is only one word in biblical Hebrew for covenant, and it is bereth. Reference number two. Strong's Concordance number 1285. And it means to cut as an act of joining in a covenant or compact. And in ancient times, those entering into a covenant would cut their palms and press their hands together as if to exchange blood. Because in ancient Hebrew, all covenants represented a bond of kinship and the blending of blood together was therefore a family covenant. As in God is our father, and Jesus is our brother, and family bonds held a level of allegiance that no other social compact held. And it is of note that the root word for bereath is bara. Reference number three, Strong's Concordance number 1262, which means to feed. And meals were always an essential component of Hebrew covenants. And this is the origin of the communion meal as an expression of sealing an act of personal choice for making a covenant in this case with the Son of God. And eating a covenant meal is an expression of the deepest personal approval of one another. And the Essenes of old in the Dead Sea Scrolls referred to communion as the holy food and the holy drink. And so this covenant tablet has always been viewed by us with great anticipation for two reasons. First, we expect that it will contain the original unaltered concept and meaning of the covenant as viewed by God. And second, it will contain valuable information concerning the nature of God and his dealings with man since the beginning, which information will be important for those who must undergo the tribulation times and have a vital need to lay hold of their beginnings in order to be empowered. 
And I am highly motivated to bring this information to the people of the Lord who are guided by his spirit and who are found anywhere on the earth or in any culture or language or religion. And as I begin this attempt, it is out of compassion for them and the poor heart of the Lord in his many burdens. And I am old now, and this will probably be my last time to use the Urim before passing it on to the next generation. And the scribes have been called together to record the vision as it may fall from my lips. And we were filled with awe and wonder as we are assembled together. And we were very serious at the prospect of standing in the presence of the Lord. To view the covenant tablet, it was a cool fall day and sunlight was falling on the Urim as that is essential for the clarity of the vision. It is very difficult to explain what one feels when they know they will be standing in his presence. And I will hesitate as usual in hoping I would not fall short in the task before me. But more deeply than that is the reality of encountering the absolute truth when the reality of my being is made bare. So after the scribes were ready and seated, and when the breast piece and thumen and urim were assembled and in place, I took my place before the Lord. There is always, for me, a very comforting element of surprise at such times. But the love of the Lord casts out all fear, and his presence always is the absolute feeling of being back home again. And each and every time the Lord is the same, and I am the one who has changed. And I am made acutely aware that I come to this place being immersed in the temporalities of life. And I come from a world far distant from his divine holiness and his unchangeability is both comforting and healing. And being in the embrace of his love is the rightful home for every living soul. And when I began to look with the Urim and Thummim, I was at once overcome with being in the presence of his abounding love. And it was more than that, for because his presence cleansed me and filled all my empty places, I was home again. And the scribes simply wrote, Grandpa is crying. And after a while, I quietly said, Hello, Lord. It is so good to be with you again. We are here, Lord, to embark on this magnificent task on your behalf and to be taught by you so that we may bring a blessing upon your people and Lord, I worry whether I am up to the task. You know, Lord, it is always like that for me. But the Lord paid no attention to my expressions of self-doubt. And I could see that he was going to speak. And he smiled at me and said, my little son, I would like to explain to you the meaning of the task that is now before you and to which all of you have set yourselves to accomplish. And this is so that you may understand my will for you in this matter and so that you may be confident in your task. And I want to open before you my purposes in bringing before your eyes the visions of the covenant tablet. And it is very important to understand the vision clearly in parentheses number one, reference number four. These number notations indicate how many times throughout this vision he cautioned me this way. For the sake of the people of my right hand, as they enter more fully to undergo the conditions of the tribulations. For these truths have been hidden from the world since the flood, and words have gone forth from my mouth to promise that all my revelations shall be revealed before the last days. And the work you are now undertaking is meant to expand and enhance the human ability to exercise free agency, insomuch that they may freely choose which way they will go. In the midst of the oppression of the tribulation times, whether they will listen to my spirit or not, so that in the midst of chaos, their knowledge and faith will empower them to overcome severe oppression and be strong. In the face of depravity and the truth that can be brought will enable them to not only be led by my spirit, but these truths will allow them by their understanding and my grace to attach to those holy forces in creation that will confirm to them the joys of salvation and the wonders of my righteous redemption. And this is so that they may go softly past the tribulation times, which are now upon them. And they must be able to expand the use of their agency so that by the intervention of their agency, they can penetrate eternity with their request to influence their present moments in so much that the things they ask for in righteousness 
and what they decide will influence the course of the world, both from before their day and after it. And in this way, the children of my right hand can achieve stability in their lives and families while in the midst of chaos. And in doing this, my people worldwide will ease my burden and calling forth the awareness of my presence, that is, in the midst of all things, may in this way take place and the great day of awakening will come and my arm will be revealed. And thus they can be effective in their lives while the wicked flounder in the midst of their chaos and the righteous can be protected from lies and falsehoods when they can act upon the truth which is vital to bring the great day of awakening. And so I come to you now to open your eyes to the mysteries of the meaning of agency and of salvation and righteousness, which is called redemption. And I do this to bring knowledge and understanding to my people so that they can be empowered from on high. And I do this to reveal to my people an understanding of agency that will enable them to find the means to come together and be united both with me and with the Erico de She. And in this way, they can draw strength from my presence in the spirits of life and creation so they may be empowered to heal the sick and raise the dead and to escape suffering and to find safety and provision for their loved ones. For the forces of evil are a gathering darkness and the adversary wrings his hands with delight and rejoices at his dominance among the peoples of the earth and fornication is like a wave of filthiness and violence and death are his watchwords and lies are his plan of attack. But be reassured because I have told my prophets the truth down through the ages that my people will be delivered and my arm will be revealed and the wicked will be no more and the world they sought to build and preserve will vanish away. And so, little son, pay careful attention to all you will hear and see in the vision, in parentheses number two, and that which you will feel and be called upon to write, and all you will be asked to do for my sake, so that my people can be a holy city, and so that the children of my father can be enlightened and preserved and taught righteousness wherever upon the earth that they are found. And in this endeavor, you are being asked to speak for the Erko Deshi to all the peoples of the earth. And you are charged to be their voice and to express their feelings and views of creation in which they are the home of man. And a clear expression of their thoughts and feelings has been extinguished by the wickedness of man through their choices through the ages and in their traditions and religions. And because so many have been taught to think that they already know and do not seek to know the truth from me. And when the Lord said this to me, I was overjoyed because all my life I have yearned for people to know of the richness of his presence and the elements of creation and in each other. And I said, I will do it, Lord, I will. And afterward, when I read my words and the notes written by the scribes, I was surprised and embarrassed that I could be so brash in the presence of the Lord to say this so quickly, but I had longed all my life to do that very thing. And now only my faith that he would not ask me to do something I could not do keeps me hopeful that I can accomplish the task. Now I will open up to you the instructions of the Lord to me regarding agency. And the Lord continued and he said, agency by definition is a reference to the ability of a person to choose freely and intelligently which way they will go and that which they will do and how they will behave. Agency is not just a dynamic that happens among people during their time of probation upon the earth in the flesh. Agency is exercised in heaven by myself and by my father and by all the living souls in heaven. That is to say that I can decide things. and My father also makes decisions as do all the angels who are in heaven and the Erico de she, who are the spirits of life in the creations of the earth. Even the devil and his angels make choices. And there is a holy way to decide and a wicked one. And the holy way of making decisions is called the sanctity of agency. And the wicked way of making decisions is called the depredation of agency, which always leads to the loss of agency. While the sanctity of agency always leads to more and more freedom of choice and both kinds of the use of agency have an identifiable pattern. 
And now I will rehearse to you and bring to your remembrance that which will enable you to identify the holy pattern of the sanctity of agency. So remember this pattern, for it will enable you to more clearly express the vision that will come before you. Now you will remember that I showed you a stone wall and written on the stones of it were four words in an important order, which order indicates the sanctity of agency. And they were say, feel, do and be and as you were viewing these words i spoke to you and said yeah could know what god would say and he could know what god would feel and he could know what god would do and he could know what god would be and the lord continued and he said and i gave you these four words in their proper order for a very wise purpose in me and they are a wise order meant to reveal a holy pathway to accomplish the true exercise of the sanctity of agency, and you will discover that the covenant tablet contains meaning that will surely bless the children of my father with this knowledge, so be patient. And this truth will unfold through the course of the visions that I will bring. And I myself ordered my earthly life after this same pathway, for I am the word of God, because I am what God would say. And I started teaching in the temple from an early age, and I spoke all the words and concepts of the truth to the multitudes, being obedient to the desires of my father. And when I looked out to see, and I beheld the poor and unfortunate, and the broken, and forsaken, and the sick, and those whose lives were filled with sin and despair, my heart was filled with compassion for them. And in this way, I am what God would feel for them and I brought the tender feelings of my father to be expressed and known to them and to the world by my many works of kindness. And when I acted upon that love and compassion and I reached out my hands to heal and to raise the dead and to forgive and to restore, I am that which God would do. And I did only that which I was guided to do by my father. And when I was subjected to the will of mankind, Building through my ministry with this pattern, I was submissive for the sake of the salvation of the truly lost, and I exercised my agency and intervened with my agency to bring the prospect of forgiveness to all the souls who are engulfed in the chains of the bondage to evil, who go below all things, and thus I became the redeemer of mankind, even as many as who will repent and love, both me and my father, and thus I am all that which God would be. And I rose again to life so that the lovely ones of my father could have eternal life. And so they could be returned to him and all my works and all the works of my father follow after this pattern of say, feel, do, and be. And the Lord continued and he said, I have also followed this pattern in all the visions that I have brought before your eyes with the urim in the four volumes of the book of remembrance. And in the first book of remembrance, even the writings of my son, Aki, I have declared profound things regarding the process of repentance and forgiveness and the creation of the souls of men in a purity of infinite love and of an exceeding great many things to the unfolding of the mysteries of the kingdom. And such revelations in the book of Aki are what God would say. And it is very important that my people learn what God would say to them so that they may overcome ways that they have been taught by the traditions of their fathers and the dogmas of their religions and the views of those who would find dominance over them. And I have done this so that they may come to learn of the true character of my father and of how infinitely they are loved by him, for he is also their father, and so that they may learn of my task as creator and redeemer. And with the second book of remembrance, even the writings of Enoch, I brought to my people that which God would feel. And there are profound accounts of my infinite and deep feelings for all my children and expressions of what I desire my people to feel. And many accounts of these things are given there. And I can feel with those who sin and reject me, for I feel no rancor. And even for the very wicked and the feelings of my father are heralded, in the record of the Book of Remembrance of Enoch in very personal ways. And in the third Book of Remembrance, even that of our ancient grandmothers, I brought to my people a knowledge of that which God would do. And that revelation is filled with clear instructions and in how to know me and my father Anarchist. 
and what they must do to live and worship by my desires and by my guidance find their way to cross over into spiritual eating and back again in this life and i brought guidance that allows them to be empowered so that they may understand how to interact with the angels of heaven and accomplish holiness of heart in the midst of wickedness which will enable my people to be empowered in their service to me and in their love for one another and all this has been to edify the righteous and enable them to live holy lives and do greater things than I have done when I walked in the flesh. And now I am come to bring you the fourth book of remembrance, even the book of Melchizedek. And with this knowledge and understanding and holy guidance and intelligence, the righteous can be truly the sons and daughters of my father during times of tribulations. And they can be enabled in their service to abide the day with holiness of heart. And they will bring joy to Anarchus and the gift of life to their families. So listen carefully, little son, and give diligent heed to all you see with Urim. In parentheses number three, for you have not known it. But from the very first use of the Urim, I have revealed to you that God is good and pure and holy and that these qualities are the nature of god and also i have illustrated the pattern of what he would say feel do and be showing you the steps of a holy pathway to the sanctity of agency and goodness is the foundation of all that god would say and purity is the foundation of all that god would feel and holiness is the foundation of all that god would do and now the covenant tablet of Melchizedek will bring to you a knowledge that love is the foundation of all that God would be. And the vision that will now come before you can instruct the righteous of the world so that they may at last be empowered to comprehend all that God would be. And it came to pass that the Lord brought to mind our very first encounter with the Urim, where vital information concerning the nature of God and his holy process of his use of agency was given. And at the time, it was not recorded in the scripture text, but was written in the introduction of the book of Aki. And so that it may be included in the scriptures, I will cite portions of it now for all to see, for it is too important to paraphrase it. And it is an example of how Anarchist himself exercises his agency. And the record is as follows. As I prayed to prepare myself to use the Urim and Thummim, I felt the Lord tell me that before I could use the Urim, I must learn something about God. So I sat and prepared the Thummim. I have to put it together and attach it to the breast piece. I was a little nervous because this would be for me the first time to get profound light from God and not be alone with my thoughts. I felt vulnerable to see and encounter new concepts of theology and information and to have to immediately say aloud something to the scribe. What if I am wrong? What if I do not understand what I am seeing? I have, as does anyone, certain processes personally that I go through to evaluate information from the Lord and all my safeguards are built into my relationship with God and my skill in discerning if it is from the Lord comes from my personal processes that usually take a few days for me to know if what I think I am hearing is from him. So after I prepared the thumum, I took the leap into oblivion and put the urim on the thumum. Oh my, how does one put the wonder and grandeur of God into words on paper? How could my trembling lips utter anything intelligent in the face of that which presented itself? I was immediately in the presence of God in each step of the way in what followed, and I had absolutely no idea what it meant until much later after it was all over. I will still learn something every time I ponder it. And a voice said, In the beginning was God, and God is good, and his goodness was before me. I was astonished and held my breath. And the voice continued, Man in his falling state, does not think of God as God is, but leans toward viewing God as man is and sees God only as the God of man. But God has the ability to penetrate this blindness and reveal himself to man so man can see God as God is. And I began to see God as God is. Bear in mind, I was not looking at the bodily image of God, nor did it seem like I was seeing some characteristic of God, 
or that I was being shown something about him. What was before me was simply God, but I was in his presence and I was actually with my eyes and ears and soul seeing the goodness of God. And it was like what I was seeing was God and my soul was engulfed in it almost to the point of it overpowering me. And before me was everything kind and sweet and gentle and innocent and mild and harmless. And all of these things I now know are the goodness of God and that which he would say. And the mirth of the wrath of God vanished from me. Like a puff of smoke in a rushing wind, God is so infinitely good that absolutely nothing he would say would arise out of anger or hate or vengeance, nor could any of his words be threatening. All such speech is utterly out of existence in his presence, and any such expressions attributed to God are a falsehood. And again the voice said, because God is good, nothing sinful, subtle, or cunning, or guilty can enter into his presence. And I knew, nothing doubting, that any such expressions with the least hint of sin would be utterly banished from entering his presence, and the sheer magnitude of his goodness would simply exclude any such expressions. And that thought was a little trouble, but at this point I did not have the presence of mind to formulate a question with regards to it, and I had not yet grasped where all this was leading, but in the back of my mind I began to ask, why is he showing me this in light of his goodness? How can I even know him? For I am a man of unclean lips. And again, the voice said, in the beginning was God and God is pure and everything changed. And the infinite purity of God was now before me. And I never would have guessed that there is so much difference between goodness and purity. And again, even as I was not seeing a part of God in his goodness, I was not seeing a part of God with his purity. It was simply God again but from an entirely different perspective. And with the period of God now before my eyes, every longing of my tiny soul to feel loved and accepted and taken in was fulfilled at that moment. And I did not ever want to leave it. For how long a human soul can be exposed to the purity of God and remain in the flesh, I do not know. Purity is the infinite connection of God and his joining in oneness with all the spirits of life and creation that feel wonderful and intelligent and pleasant and happy and wholesome. His feelings are blended with them. He lives it. He breathes and moves in all such feelings. How can any human soul that is accustomed to feeling alienation and separation and loneliness and fear ever comprehend an infinitely undivided presence with such wonderful feelings who is in the midst of all things purity is the definition of all that is to be felt in the midst of the presence of the great holy one anarchus and again reality swept over me and i said to myself all of humankind is vagabonds and aliens in the earth and separate from the feelings of god how can we ever know him but again, the voice said, God is so pure that nothing violent or lustful or unfeeling or hard hearted can enter into his presence or come near unto him. And by this time, my two questions were fully conscious. Why is he telling me this? And how can mankind with all their corrupted feelings have anything whatsoever to do with this pure God? For mankind has felt violent and lustful and cold-hearted for so long that those feelings have become what is known as human nature. I was trying not to think of what the feelings of man were like compared to this pure God that was before me. There seemed to be attached to it a dread and hopelessness in the face of the reality of the alienation of mankind to his environment and each other and ultimately even to himself. But once again, the voice said, in the beginning was God and God is holy. And I was utterly astonished at how drastically it all changed again. For holy was nothing like good or pure. And again, I was not seeing some aspect of God. It was simply God again. And all the doings of God were holy to the extent that to my tiny human soul, there was nothing else that existed but the holiness of God. And God is so holy that nothing alienated or rebellious or cruel or merciless can enter into his presence or even comprehend the least hint of his presence. 
And God is holy because he is infinitely engaged in and committed to and in the midst of acting upon that which is true and right and wholesome and nourishing. And what he is doing makes him the ultimate and final authority, the absolute supreme being of the universe. Goodness is what you are like and what you say. Purity is your relationship in your feelings to all things around you. And holiness is what you do. And before my eyes was God, who was totally engaged in acting out his holiness. And those actions are so infinite that there was no place his actions do not utterly prevail. And no place where he prevails that does not have life because of it. By this time, it was obvious that mankind could literally have nothing whatever to do with God. And I thought, how can he even be showing me this? And I said, oh, God, the wonder of your being is so great that anything you ever produce, we cannot legitimately be near. And when you create the wind, it will not be able to enter into the chest of sinful man to give him breath. And when you create light, it cannot affect our lustful eyes to make them see. And a feeling of dread again came near, but the spirit was there to comfort me. And it told me to be patient, for what I was in the midst of was a joyous thing. And I looked with keen expectation and an alert mind. And God said to me, first, I am telling you why I created all things and every man in their generations. And I also am telling you how it can be that you can know me and I can be your father. But it did not seem like that was what he was showing me. I could not reconcile what I was seeing with the urn with what I knew with mankind. My best guess was that mankind was simply forever cut off from his presence. I was not continuing on with the urn because I had any idea how this dilemma was resolvable. It all seemed way over my head. And a voice said, look. And God said, I am God. And I have an infinite ability to be compassionate, yet nothing unfortunate can enter into my presence. So I have no opportunity to show compassion. And again, all things clean and wonderful come from me. And I am infinitely able to be kind and merciful and comforting. But nothing guilty or afflicted or abused can come near unto me. So whom will I heal and console? And again, I am God. And all creation would flee at my command and nothing threatening or sad or perplexing can enter into my abode. So whom will I comfort or protect without these things of what effect would my goodness be? What is it that I can join with in my purity and what purpose would my holiness accomplish but the respect in my heart for those who choose to be different than myself by the power of my son? gave rise to a force in creation that can overcome all these things and that force is agency without agency i cannot be a god or father to mankind and the lord said look and i looked and i beheld the light of god and in the midst of it was the son of god and god said all creation and all of my and man's doings with each other must needs be within the bonds of the two great decrees of creation the first decree of creation is that I can be a father to man in creation by the power of the intervention of the agency of my son, who is in the flesh, as are all men. God was actually telling me that the power of agency, as expressed by his son in the flesh, was of such a magnitude that it called forth the effects of the respect of God to be brought to bear in dispelling the awful gulf between a perfect God and sinful man, so that in the end, man can fully know their God and heavenly Father. Now the immensity of this was before my eyes, that is, of Christ having to do all this by himself in the flesh. And it was overwhelming to me, and I pondered the magnitude of it, and thus ended my account as it has been written. And it came to pass that since I first heard all this, I became very interested to learn more about the use of agency, seeing that it is one of the most powerful forces in the universe, even in so much that it was the very force that allowed God himself to be our father. And it came to pass that as I was pondering this first profound account, I said to the scribes, now listen, 
I hear a voice. It seems close and very comforting. And it is saying, in the beginning was God and God is love. And the array of his love is before my eyes and it is spread out like a mantle on all that exists. And it is one of the saddest of all the aspects of the undertakings of anarchists in his creation of the universe that such an all-encompassing and infinite love is comprehended by none and known by only a few. And none except those who stand utterly pure before him can even glimpse a portion of it but a full awareness of this love will come to all the redeemed at the great day of judgment and there will not be one human soul that will not be surprised at the extent of it. And because God is love, he is our father and true and complete expressions of agency can only arise out of this love. And it was almost too much for me to take in, even though I was only feeling a tiny part of it. And the voice continued and it said, Nothing that lies or speaks untruth can come into his presence, and nothing that deceives or harshly controls or enslaves or manipulates can come into his presence. And I saw that lies are not the opposite of the truth, because they cannot rise to that level. But lies are the opposite of love, and lies and deceits are merciless toward anarchists. And none of the Erechotis she ever lie, no, not one. But they ever bear a message of truth and sing of his love and fully express the heart of God. And love is that which God would be in every cloud or puff of wind or hill or river. Even any of the Erechodeshi ever and only and always bear witness of the love of Anakis. And remember, little son, in this undertaking, you will be called upon to speak for the Erechodeshi of their message of love and of their function as messengers of the truth. And the great God Anarchist has perfect truth and perfect infinite knowledge, and no lie has ever entered his mind. And because God is love, his is the ultimate expression of agency and real, whole, and perfect expressions of agency are always within the boundaries of the truth. And you will see that he makes any decision based on the discernment of the truth and the expectation of eternity, which expectation fails mortals so often, and it will be shown that his expression of agency is a perfect example of how decisions must be made, both little and great. And my father Anarchist spoke and defined the need to decide, and he felt deeply with those with whom he conferred, and he acted upon the truth that was discerned there, and he decided he would go himself to redeem his wayward children, and so here I am. And if my people will ask me, I will speak to them by my spirit. And if they feel with me and their fellows to listen to opinions and ask questions and anticipate the use of eternity in all they do in their deciding, then they can make decisions and form opinions and perspectives together with me and be my faithful children. And so upon hearing and seeing all these things, I felt more prepared to proceed. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabua, Chapter 1. Shalom, family. The Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabua, Chapter 2. And so I called the scribes together once again. And the weather was cold, so we could not sit outside in order for the sun to shine on the Urim as we assembled inside before a large window. And I prayed, Dear Lord, we are here before you. It seems that there are so many things you have brought to us concerning agency. And agency is so important that we need more understanding. From the very beginning, you have indicated that agency is the force in creation that has allowed you to be a father to sinful man. And now all these years later, we have not heard anything more about agency. And with this vision before us, I worry that I will not understand that which you want to bring. And when I have been cautioned now numerous times to listen carefully, I have come to have you teach us concerning the truth about agency, if it is your will, amen. And when I had prayed this prayer, I looked and I saw a group of people 
and in their midst a fire was burning. And as I beheld this scene, a column of light emerged from the fire, and it is an angel of light, and she is coming my way, up the side of this mountain from which I have a view. And she is standing before me, and I can tell she is going to speak. And she said, This day I have been sent by anarchists to instruct you concerning the desire of his heart, and to bring to your mind the truths of the origins of agency in eternity. So listen carefully because these are important instructions in parentheses number four for the souls of all the righteous who must endure the tribulations. And I recall to your mind a time before the beginning to hear the account of when anarchists pondered and made decisions that were the foundations of salvation and righteousness. And you will see that agency is indeed the force in creation that allows him to be our father. And the Lord was standing by, and his spirit caught me up. And we went together to Elda, where Anarchus dwells. And he said, To learn about the origin of agency, you must come here into Elda. And I was afraid, for I had once been in the presence of the light of the Father in Elda, and his presence was so powerful that I could not speak, and I could not stand. And now I shook before the scribes, and at this moment I knocked the urim off from the thummim. That was before my face for the greatness of my shaking, and it fell, but I caught it in my hand and placed it back on, and I prayed, Lord, stay close to me. But it was not as hard as I had thought, because his gentle spirit was there to comfort me and to help me to be calmed and quit shaking. And I began to behold Elder through the urn, and I saw the habitation of the great Holy One Anarchist, and his presence was the light in Elder and the ground glowed bright with the light, and it had the appearance to me to be like a carpet of pure snow, and it stretched on forever, every way that I cast my eyes. And the angel said, In Elda, the great holy one, Anarchus, sits in the midst of eternity, and he comprehends all things, and he knows all things, and he is in the midst of all things, and round about all things. And eternity has no concept of place, because anarchist is everywhere, and there is no place that he is not. And eternity has no time, for time came because of sin, and sin cannot exist in Elda. And there will be a moment when time will be declared to be no more in the temporal world. And thus I saw that there is no place or time in the eternity of Elda. But anarchist sees all things through eternal eyes, both things that are in the past or in the present or in the future, for he sees them all. And it came to pass that as I sat before the Urim and gazed about with wonder, I began to fully realize what it meant for me to be an elder before the beginning of creation. And I spoke not a word, but stayed close to the Lord. And I see the anarchist is not alone. For I hear vast multitudes of voices talking and singing and praising. And in the midst of my view, I saw some of the Erica de she, and I did not count them. But the Lord said, these 12 Erica de she are known as the angels of the presence. And they go from eternity to eternity. And anywhere Anarchus brings life, they are there. And I wondered greatly at that which was before my eyes. And my little soul was expanded. And the Lord said, these 12 are known as the council of the Erko Deshi, reference number five. See page 521 for the inscription of the council. For they ever and always attend with diligence to the needs of my gentle father, Anarchus, and they love him with a tenderness that can only be found in Elda. That is beyond any human comprehension. And in Elda, they are spirits, just as Anarchus is a spirit. And I could see the spirits of the Erekodeshi with my eyes, and I could see the Lord, but I only felt the spirit of Anarchus, and I did not see him. And it came to pass that one of the Erekodeshi called Ebedel, who was the rock of Ariel, and first inscribed among the rocks of the earth, spoke to me, and she said, In Elder with Anarchus, eternity is so infinite that it cannot be measured. And as if speaking to me had brought something to her mind, she turned to Anarchist and she asked, Is there any boundary to eternity here in Elda? 
Is there an edge to eternity somewhere? And I heard Anakis say, I want there to be one. And all the council of the Erechodeshi looked at one another in amazement and said, If Anakis wants it, then it will be. And Zathan, the olive tree, who is the first inscribed among trees and elder, said to Evadel, Ask him about it for us. And after the eleven conferred together with Evadel, she said, O oh, Anarchist, I have been asked to present you with a question. Is there an edge to eternity? Is there a boundary that can be seen? And what may be found there? And Anarchist answered, Go and see. And he pointed toward the east, but I know there are no directions in Elda, because eternity cannot be divided. So if the inhabitants of Elda are here, they cannot be there, but they are everywhere, and all is infinitely present in Elda. And as I beheld this marvelous sight, I saw that where Anakis pointed was called the East, because he pointed to something new, and anything new in Elda must be a new awareness of a way to love. And I saw that his gesture of pointing and naming it the East was his reproval for them to go so that they would know that they could learn something new in Elda. And I could discern that for the Erechodeshi, all this was felt by them with a new kind of excitement and joy. And they marveled at it to one another with a profound sense of wonder that there could be anything new in Elda or any place to go there. And they had never felt the joy of reproval before. And it came to pass that I beheld all the spirits of the Erechodeshi gathering themselves together to go towards the east as they embarked upon their repentance and i was particularly interested in watching the spirit of the mountains go because i think of them as being so big and i saw the huge spirit of them move as swiftly as the rest and i saw the hills move out also and my spirit went with them and i too was filled with wonder at what may be seen at the edge of eternity and we arrived and they looked and the council saw the edge of eternity, and Anarchus asked them, What is it that you see? And in one accord they all together said, Agency. And I looked also at the edge of eternity, but I saw nothing that indicated to me anything about agency. But being in his loving presence, I did not feel any sense of embarrassment, because I did not see what they saw, and I was satisfied to believe them. But I began to wonder just what it may be that they saw. And I asked the Lord, what was it that they saw? And the Lord brought into my mind a view as seen through the eyes of the Erechodeshi. And I looked again at the edge of eternity together with him. First of all, for the Erechodeshi, going somewhere in the eternity of Elda that has no place was unheard of. And the approval of repentance was an exciting new adventure. Reference number six. They are repenting for never having gone somewhere. And to encounter the unexpected in the eternity of Elda had never happened to them before, and they were keenly alert and sensitive to all that was before them like an excited group of little children. And I began to see the edge of eternity with new eyes, and the ground was shining with the light of anarchist, and there was a bank, like the bank of a river, and I knew somehow that on the other side was another eternity, and at the edge of eternity, I looked at the river, and the top of the water of it was smooth like crystal glass that shone and shimmered brightly with the light of anarchist, and the light did not hurt my eyes. And I looked, and it came to my mind by the Spirit just what they were seeing and feeling, and they saw the process of becoming. For an elder up until then, there had only been the condition of being. And they saw and discerned in themselves the cycles of life that had beginnings and endings and that which lay before them. And they could feel their struggles and triumphs and the processes of their lives. And I was so accustomed to feeling the process of becoming that I did not know to recognize it as agency, but to them it was startling new and very clear to see. And becoming is absolutely driven by agency as the living choose their way freely, either to listen to anarchist or not either to feel the light of anarchist or not, either to act, to bond together in the love of anarchist or not, and either to be like anarchist and following his example or not. 
and an elder agency was not known up until then, so that which came before the eyes and hearts of the Erkulishi in that very moment was the new beginning of agency in the inception of it. And it came to pass that I saw a wondrous sight, and I heard the Erkulishi exclaim aloud with much enthusiasm and adulation, never have we felt so at home as we feel here at the edge of eternity. And the wind sang, and the mountains rejoiced, and the hills danced with joy, and the fountains wept in their delight. And the thunder clapped her hands in happiness, and the rocks made great exclamations, and the trees bore the news in their celebrations. And immediately the Lord was instructing me in my mind by the word of his presence. And I heard that becoming was deeply embedded in the very souls of the Erkotashi, for rivers flow, and the winds blow, and trees grow, and the rocks snow, and fires glow, and the sun will show that the fountains go, all in their love to be our home. And they said to Anakis, we always want to live here, and we do not want to leave this place. And Anakis said softly to them, then you shall be my counselors, and we shall confer together here. And we shall come to an understanding and find answers together here regarding your task in your new home in this place. And I could plainly feel the thoughts of the Erkudishi and they whispered among themselves saying, The edge of eternity is influencing Anakis, for how can one who comprehends all things come to understanding by seeking the advice of others? And the Erkudishi were stunned when Anarchus continued and said, I have a question to which I need an answer. And he said, Shall I create all the spirits of mankind? And they whispered, How can one who knows all things ask questions and seek outside himself to find answers? And they could clearly sense that the edge of eternity was having profound effects indeed upon them all, including upon Anarchus himself. And they all marveled greatly and were struck with wonder. And I began to behold marvelous things that surely have been hidden from man since the beginning. And I saw further that the concept of the East was only in relation to Anarchus. And the Erekodeshi beheld that the East at the edge of eternity followed him around and was not a place in Elda, but it was the direction away from Anarchus. They went toward the newness of learning and becoming and the joys of approval and the comfort of feeling what he feels and doing what he does, and of receiving the assurance of healing, and the peace of his perspective, and the processes of becoming as they join with others. For Anarchus cannot become in the midst of the eternity of Elda, but at the edge of eternity he stepped into becoming our father, and the father of the Erekodeshi, and of even all creation. And the Lord said to me, Anarchus, as our father now has four directions emanating from him, because he is influenced by the edge of eternity and the directions follow him around. And anything pointing from him to learning and comprehending his kind reproval in your process of becoming or that comes to reassure one of his love is the East to them. And anything that points from him to living life through its processes of becoming in the joys of his loving kindness is the South to them. And anything that points from him and results in the feelings of forgiveness in your becoming and renewal and resurrection and wholeness and healing is the West to them. And anything that points from him to the hope of the harvest of salvation and happy homecomings in your processes of becoming is the North to them. And anywhere he is in the place that originates at the edge of eternity, those directions are present before him whenever he feels those things according to the definitions of his loving kindness. And the Lord said to me, the earth has the four winds, but man has been given the four directions of Anarchus to follow them around as they do him. And they are in the exact manner as Anarchus and the four directions of men are meant to complement and sustain the four winds of the earth. Reference number seven. These are the voices coming from the four directions that Enoch established during the division of the earth. And the earth views man to be in the image of God because of this. So no matter wherever man and anarchist are, if they are facing east, the south is always on their right hand, but south to the earth never changes. And it is truly a gift from anarchist that even in the temporal world, mankind finds the directions following them around 
in the likeness of their kind father, Anarchus. And this sets man apart in creation as the rightful heirs of holy dominion. Thus our feeling, those four specific identifiable feelings, is the force that gives us our holy dominion in all its forms. And the righteous utilization of those four feelings by man creates, in the eyes of the Erekodeshi, the view and realization that we are created in the image of God, and they all know that they are to respond to the request of those in the image of God according to the decrees of creation. And it came to pass that Eva Dell spoke to Anakis, saying, Father, ask us again your question. And it was the first time he had been called Father. And it was the first time they knew he could have a question. And I was astonished that there could be a first time that Anarchus would be called father because he is the one who does not change. And I listened for all I was worth and as carefully as I could. And Anarchus said, I have been pondering in my soul because my love has become broader and deeper and more focused upon those who are becoming. As we have been together here at the edge of eternity and like all of you, I too desire with all my heart to dwell here with those who are becoming, and you can be assured I will eternally be here, for I am here with you now, and in my soul I want children, and my yearnings for them cannot be contained, neither will it diminish because of any consequence of agency, and I need to know if all of you feel the same as I, and now I have two questions. So my first question is, shall I create all the spirits of mankind? And Anarchus continued, and he asked his second question, Will you act together with me? To enter into counsel so that we may confer together, to discover if I should create all the spirits of the children of men, so they will be my children in your midst, and also that your myriads will be their home, to provide every needful thing for them. And they all answered with one voice, O oh, Father, we will act together with you as you have said. And Debariel said, seeing that being here at the edge of eternity has prompted your questions, it must mean that if you create all the spirits of mankind, they must have agency. And Anarchus replied, that is so. And Zathan said, Father, all the individual spirits of the children of men will mature as they move past their infancy and expand until they come to the age of accountability. And they will leave Elder to come here to the edge of eternity. To be influenced by agency, and agency will determine their entire pathway as they become throughout their lives, and this becoming will endure with them, clear until the end of time and place, when they return to stand before you here in Elda. And Zathan continued and said, The day will thus come, when they choose in the freedom of exercising their agency, even according to their wills, to do something contrary to the nature of your love, then they will become unclean and corrupt and impure and unholy. And seeing that none such can enter into your presence, any who thus choose will be lost to you forever. Is it not so? And I saw that Anarchus was of such an innocent and childlike mind that he took the words of Zathan to heart and he said, Oh, what was me? What shall I do when I am bereft of my children? And Ariel, who is the son, said to the council of the angels of the presence, Is it not amazing that Anarchus seeks our advice? And even though he knows all things, yet he believes us and takes our words to heart. And I see that Anarchus is now fully engaged in exercising his free agency. Oh, wonder of wonders, what can it mean? And Paniel, who is the river Simca, and first inscribed among the rivers of the earth, acts the council. Does it mean that we all will have an influence as to if Anarchus will create all the souls of men? And when he does create them and we become their rightful home, will we draw from Elder the strength to endure with him in our tolerance when they go astray? And I saw in this that the council never lost contact with Elder, and all the council was overcome with emotion and were weeping with joy, and they could not speak. And I said to myself, now I know why all the air coded she felt like the edge of eternity was home, because it was built into their souls, that they would be the companions and sustainers of mankind throughout all the course of creation. And I also could foresee that in the course of the earth, there will come a time that wickedness will increase to such an extent 
that it will become necessary to set a limit to the tolerance of the air coated sheep to endure, as the wicked dwell in their midst. And Anakis discerned their thoughts, and he said, You were created for man, and they are the objects of your creation. Reference number eight. This is where they have been heading all along. And the feelings of home you feel will generate a home for all my children through righteousness, whether they be good or evil. And you will live here at the edge of eternity with all my children, and you will have all the joys and the sorrows of the passages of life in their becoming, and in their becoming, no matter what they become. And you too will have agency in all the Ericota she leapt for joy at the prospect of their becoming with agency, and they were overcome and still could not speak. And I hope they knew what they were in for. But Evie Dale was solid and she retained her composure unlike the rest. And she approached Anarchus and she asked, O oh, Anarchus, what is the edge of eternity called where we shall abide with your children in the midst of their becoming? And he answered, it is called heaven. And all of you shall dwell here in this place with me and with them. And the council discerned the sorrow of Anarchus and Evie Dale said, what of those among your children who sin and make choices to go astray? Can we still abide with them here in this place called heaven? And Anarchus wept, and he said, When they sin, heaven will be transformed, so as to be seen by them to be the temporal world. O oh, my poor soul, what shall I do to save those who sin and go astray from knowing me, so that they may live with us here in heaven? And Anarchus thought a good long while, and finally he gathered all the council. And they spoke together and considered his questions, and Anarchus began to ponder within himself, in his heart, the difference that he felt in his soul. Being influenced here at the edge of eternity, and he reasoned upon these things intelligently, and he said, I came to this place, and my loving kindness found a new place to go in my love. And I allowed myself to not know, in like manner as you and my children, and I chose to seek outside myself for answers with all of you and them, and to come to understanding with all of you together, and I felt the feelings of grief at the prospect of your guidance concerning the sins of my children, and their not being able to abide with me here in heaven, and it is a wonderment to me that all these feelings will be what all my children will feel in their pathway to becoming. And I can see that the edge of eternity has shown me that I and my children and all of you will feel the very same feelings together, whether to our joy or to our sorrow. And I said, O oh Lord, how can I live knowing Anarchus has sorrow? And he looked upon me with eyes of compassion. And Anarchus continued and he said, So I now declare that the part of my soul that has been thus influenced by the edge of eternity to not know and to seek understanding and to wander and to feel joy or sorrow shall leave Elda and enter in at the edge of eternity, to walk among my children to save them when they sin, and to forgive them, salvation in parentheses, and to redeem them back to holiness of heart and join them to you. Reference number nine, the council of Elda. And to me here in heaven, righteousness in parentheses, and I further declare that this very part of me that I have thus described shall become a man to walk among men, and he shall be called my son, and my words will be his words, and my feelings will be his feelings, and what he does will be that which I do, and I shall be the living water of life for them. Reference number 10, Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 and John chapter 4 verse 14 through my son, and thus my soul here at the edge of eternity shall spill out and flow over like living water into the midst of my children, and I will flow out with them into the temporal world to accompany them in all their acts of becoming, whether for good or for ill, and in all their daily walk in their families. And because I will be like them in that which they experience, being a man like them, I will do so in the form of my son, with the needs to exercise my agency also, and I will not overpower them with my presence as a man in the temporal world, and I will become in their midst together with them and not receive a fullness at the first. So I will go myself and grow grace for grace and set for them a living example of my loving kindness in the temporal world. 
And the great God of heaven rejoiced, and his love for his children spilled out and flowed over, and could not be contained. And immediately in the light of his presence, there appeared the man that he had become. And the rejoicings of Anakin spread out to encompass all eternity at the sight of the man. And he said, I have exercised my agency this day. And my ability to act will follow this man into the temporal world to be with the children of men. And thus it can be borne witness to that the Son of God, as he walked among men, lived in time and place. And he asked questions and conferred with his fellows and made requests to his Father in heaven. And he sought answers outside himself to bring understanding to the children of men. And because he walks in the flesh with his children in the temporal world, he will be subjected to experience their errors and ignorance and sins and waywardness. And he can love them with a father's love to save them in spite of their sin, salvation in parentheses. And he can show them the way and how he uses his agency. And the manner in which he chooses will be an example to them, insomuch that when they know him and can join with him and love him, they shall know Anarchist and love him. And in the end, be redeemed back into Elda to live with him, righteousness in parentheses. And so it is very important that all the righteous cling to this example of how Anarchist and the man that he became have used and expressed their agency. And in these things, we can now see how the Son of God was begotten at the edge of eternity. And now we can get a glimpse of what part of God the Son is, all of which came to be because of the infinite love Anarchist has for sinful man and their pattern in their decision making or use of agency of say, feel, do, and be, is not merely for steps to follow, but they are a spontaneous way of thinking, and they are habits of emotion, and they are patterns of the use of your intelligence, and they are a natural way of showing forth good and virtuous behavior, supported by the spirit of your Redeemer that lives within you. And I see Abedel is wise, and she is teaching the other watchers of the presence, and she is saying, because the man that Anarchist will become will express only and completely the agency of Anarchist, as he did at the edge of eternity, it must need be that he create the earth, so that all the elements of the earth that have found form by his hand will show forth the agency of Anarchist in the temporal world also. And it came to pass that as I pondered these things, the Lord said to me, Go and look at how bad makes decisions, even the devil and see what habits and patterns he uses. So I looked and I found that the spirit brought back to my remembrance the account of Gokar Harim, as it is recorded in the book of Aki. And Bad said, I am Semihazar. I am a traveler and I am better than you. I am beautiful. My mother is a comet and your mother is a broken down mountain. And in this way, Bad started on the other end of the process for he started with B. And others were attracted to his bragging and to his haughty words. And it was said that he would compare and place value and worth of one above another, thus giving birth to prejudice and racism, in this way then express what he would do. And it is recorded that Bad felt superior to his fellows, and he had haughtiness which expressed his feelings. And lastly, the record indicates that some believed him and were influenced by him and by the things he said. And they began to ask him, and he began to rehearse to them the wonders of his travels. And he began to define lying visions to his followers, and he became the father of lies. And in this way, he ended his pattern of his use of agency with his sayings. And the record goes on to read, that those who paid him heed became dissatisfied with their place in the will of God, and they desired satisfaction, and Bad found profound dominance over his fellows. And he is the first inscribed among all the evil Dakar Darchi, and thus we see that for him, he used his agency to be, do, feel, and say. And it was exactly the opposite way of thinking as the great Holy One and the man that he became. And when someone decides to change their own vision to be what they are not, they are subverting their vision of created purpose, just like Semihaza did. And they look first to what they can be 
and they are in rebellion against Anarchist and his desires for them. And they say to themselves, I can be this or I can be that, whether it be to be beautiful or strong or smart or brave. But if they begin with what would I say about myself, that means developing what one thinks first. And the Lord said, as a man thinketh, so is he. What you learn to think is what you will become. And Anakin sang a song of joy and Ebedel learned it from him. So she could give it to a holy nation. And it is called the Rock Song. Reference number 11. Read Pseudopigrapha, Volume 1, page 408, line 16 through 21. See the Handbook of Established Righteousness for information about this song. For it is named after the Rock of Ariel, an anarchist laid hold of the golden center of the presence with his left hand, so he could use it as an element of righteousness, for it is his center of salvation. And he did so because he could now go himself to be with man and be glorified, he being their savior. And it came to pass that Anarchus worshipped, and the smoke of his censer filled the house. And his worship was such that it would allow Mozart to place the presence of his father into all the forms element would take in creation, both in man and in the angels of heaven, by the intervention of his agency. And thus the spirit and presence of Anarchus became the first spirit of the four spirits of life that are in all things. And it could not be removed because it was put there by the intervention of the agency of his son. And further, the worship of Anarchus by bringing it about that Mozart could place his presence there caused the foundation to be laid for the book of life. And a person is said to be written into the book of life when they can experience the sweetness of life through the eyes of Anarchus, who is present in element with them. And the worship of Anarchus caused salvation to flow out and spill over into the edge of eternity, and it spread out like a cloud of rejoicing to enter in to penetrate into the inner souls of all the spirits of life, which hold all four spirits of life in them. And it generated a force of life that enlivened all things and could not be stayed nor held back. And it was the influence whereby the very man that he became was conceived by a virgin to be born of woman. And the forces of love emerged from the life forms in creation to enter into a holy woman. And Mosa became the son of his left hand, even the messenger of salvation. And on the tablet, the left hand of Anarchus is revealed. And the fingers of the left hand on the tablet show Further, the sanctity of agency of say, feel, do, and be, as practiced by the Father in heaven. And the covenant is seen in the palm of the left hand of Mozart to represent when he entered into being our Savior on behalf of his Father. An anarchist is ever faithful to keep his part of the covenant with us. And a censor can be seen coming down through the open veil from the edge of eternity to form the rest of the tablet. And the presence of the smoke of worship filled Elda and all the council of the Erekodeshi knew fully the extent the influence agency had on Anarchist, and all heaven was silent for the space of a time. And thus we see the Anarchist became a man, so he could go to where his children are in their state of corruption, and he will allow himself to be in time and place for their sakes, and he will know all the sorrows and burdens of the flesh that come to men because of sin, Yet he shall be in their midst and have no sin. And it will come to pass that as a man, he will need, as do all men, to have faith in his father in heaven and to cleave always to his father in the midst of his many trials. And he will walk in perfection of way among the children of men and be it known that he himself must keep the law in order to rise up triumphant. And thus we see that the council of elder beheld the sure foundation of salvation and that the expression of agency defined the edge of eternity to now hold salvation and it showed forth the nature of the agency of Anarchist and his son and the council of the Erico de she, which became the example for all who are holy to follow in their own expressions of agency among the children of men and with the angels of heaven. And be it also known that to intervene with agency means to expand the effects of agency in so much that 
that which is determined in righteousness and truth will be applied to such an extent that it will burst the boundaries of time and place so that those decisions will influence the course of the earth and the inhabitants of it in every time period in every place before their day and after my how can greater understanding come to the hearts of men than that which have been viewed here with urn to be taught at the council of elder for now we have had it revealed to us the very inception of the plan of salvation and we have been brought to understanding to know the precise relationship the father has with the son even as he has been prepared from the foundation of the world and we have learned that the plan of salvation has generated the first two spirits of life that are in all creation that abide to give the gift of life to both man and the Erkodishi, to also include the Darkardishi, who are the one-third of the watchers of heaven who fell away. And those two spirits of life are the spirit of Anakis, and the living spirit of whichever form element has taken, being a tree, a hill, or the wind. And we have learned that the agency of Anakis gave rise to the first decree of creation that has defined eternity itself, to allow Anakis to be our father. And thus it is even in small decisions that we make use our gift of agency, the holy pathway to salvation in our thinking and habits should follow, say, feel, do, and be. Yea, even a parent interacting with a child can notice the perverse pattern trying to emerge, and they can bring important guidance, for example, a mother reproving an older son for being too rough on a younger one and causing crying and distress and the mother can gently reprove to remind what a good big brother should be like or what he should say and the child may say i am a good big brother b in parentheses and everyone else was being rough too do in parentheses besides he deserves it because he pushed me first feel in parentheses so you should not accuse me say in parentheses and in this way the older child would use his agency to deny the sanctity of agency is shown forth by Anakis. Or the child could choose to apologize and say, I am so sorry, little brother. Say, in parentheses, I did not realize how badly it would cause you to feel. Feel, in parentheses, I want you to stay close to me next time. Do, in parentheses, so that I can take better care of you. And that way, I will be a better brother to you. Be, in parentheses. And if we, in our fallen state, while in the midst of the chaos of tribulations, will remember to repent and to teach repentance in this simple but powerful way, we will stand strong for our families, our communities, and the Lord. And so to summarize how to make decisions using the examples of Anarchus in his use of agency as it applies to us, first when considering a decision large or small, ask what would the Lord say, and hear his word to you in your heart. And second, be satisfied with nothing less than to feel what he feels with him. And that which his spirit has said to you, then try the spirits, do, in parentheses, whether it is the spirit of God or not, and take some little step forward to attempt to put the answer into effect, to see how the spirit responds. And if the spirit accompanies that first step, then take another one and continue to take a repentant attitude, being open to his kind approval. And lastly, as the spirit prospers and supports that decision, be thankful and praise him that you are in his will and that which you have chosen. And after receiving all these things, my mind was filled to overflowing and my heart was faint. And I had to rest for a while before continuing on and the scribes had to rest their hands for a moment also. And it can be seen thus far that the Lord has shown forth in the vision the most deeply instructive and gratifying understanding of agency and the foundation of the plan of salvation. But I could tell that he was not finished yet. So we gathered our strength and continued on with Urm. And the angel de Bariel is still standing before me. And I saw that now she is turning to be facing east. And the sunrise is shining on her face and it adds to the brilliance of her countenance. And she is the daughter of the sun, and the definition of her spirit is introspection and self-examination in pursuit of repentance. No wonder she is the one who introduced us to this vision, and I can tell she is going to speak again. 
And after she said some things that I could not hear, she turned and pointed to the south and said, I would recall to your mind the first great council of heaven that came after the council of Elda, and I will now use the account of it to show forth yet another example of how Anarchist expresses his use of agency. And as I looked south, I thought I felt something beckoning me to learn about living life in the presence of Anarchist, and I looked. And everything to be seen there was very busy moving about. And at first I wondered what I was seeing, but soon I realized that the process of creation was rapidly flashing by, and it was transpiring before me, and I thought that the angel must be moving me along through time, so she could open up to me the vision of the council of heaven, and I could tell I was about to see something more about the process of creation. And every act of creation became an expression of agency to decide how every spirit of life in creation would be defined in their feelings and contribution with their gift of life. And every tree, and every animal, and every hill, even all the myriad of the souls in creation, made a careful choice to follow the man as he spoke with each one. Sometimes he spoke to them about what he wanted them to feel, and sometimes he asked for volunteers. And he said to the trees, Sometimes the children of my father will find themselves to be weak. Who will go for me to carry the feelings of strength? It will need be one of you. Who will live close to them in their daily lives? Someone who can be their home and help them to keep warm and cook their food and give them places to sleep and to sit. And all the family of the oak tree said, we will do it. And they said it with strong determination. And in this way, the love of Anarchus was able to penetrate into creation in his camaraderie with the trees. And in this way, Anarchus and Mosa and creation acted with the intervention of their agencies in creation together. And it is a wonder to realize that every bird and animal and tree and hill and puff of wind after asking questions and consulting together in truth, purposely chose to be their definition, according to the desire arising out of their agencies to choose love and in this way. The Air Kodashi and creation are a true community of holiness, and the magnitude of it is staggering in its scope, and mankind is blind indeed. And it came to pass that things slowed down, and I could see Moza standing in the south, and my heart was so full at the sight of him, and I wanted to rush over to him and fall at his feet. And he looked at me and he said to me with his own voice, Little son, in this undertaking you will view the first council of heaven and you will be called upon once again to speak on behalf of the Erkotashi to all the peoples of the earth. And I tell you now that it is time for the way the Erkotashi view life to be made manifest in yet another way. For the Erkotashi have yearned for a long duration for people to know what their gift of life means to them. In their love for mankind, and the Erko de Shi are living souls with a spirit and a body, and they also were spiritual in the day that I created them, as were mankind. And it is their earnest desire that the righteous peoples of the earth lay a hold of the truth of their love so that I can empower them, and many of the Erko de Shi will find fulfillment in their creation at last and be loved by man in return, and be preserved in their purity. And I bid you be diligent in all things, five in parentheses, that come before your eyes in the vision, so that you may learn more about righteousness, and speak for the Erkotashi, to expose the souls of mankind to the love and Erkotashi have for them. For I tell you now, that the love they feel for every individual of mankind governs all they do in righteousness. And in this way, the power by which they were created can become known. And the Lord said, I will help you to know what to say and how to say it. And it came to pass that I heard a gentle voice behind me and it said, I am Anarchist and I am the father to all the watchers of heaven. And I can become fully known to the righteous of mankind through them, yea, even in so much that the righteous may be brought to comprehend my dwelling place among the Erkotashi who are in their midst, and who in turn give mankind their opportunity for the gift of life. For the heart of man has not known nor yet considered that it is I myself that lives with them in creation, and I know of no greater blessing 
than for my people to be able to cross over in their hearts from their temporal world into Eden, to behold and feel my presence in their world and rest in the arms of my loving kindness. And I was greatly moved at the words of Anakin, and my poor heart was as if it were melt. And I said, O oh Lord, please show me that I might learn to see and understand how to speak for the Erechodeshi. For it is truly the desire of my heart that the world discover your love in them and their love for man. And I want to be their voice to the world and especially to all the lovely ones of Anakist among men. I want to do it, Lord. I do. And as I write this, I still remember how surprised I was and quite embarrassed yet again that I answered to sound brash in the presence of Anakist. And I am glad that I said it to the Lord instead of Anakis, and I only hope that I can do it. And if I do, it will not be by my doing, but only by his grace and patience. And I have always dreamed of the people of the world knowing them, but could never find the words, nor imagine how it could be done. But I asked him to forgive me, and I set out to proceed. And I can think of nothing more wonderful that my soul could desire than to make such information known. And I pondered upon each one of the 24 leaders of the Erkodeshi. And so I continued to look with Urim, and now I am viewing the evening of the fifth day of creation, and I see that all has been created except man and the animals. And Anakist is preparing for what he will create on the sixth day, and he has summoned and called together all the living spirits in creation that were created during the first five days. And I can see that it includes all the watchers of heaven, even all the Erkodeshi, who are those two-thirds that always remain faithful, and also the Dokar Darchi, who are the one-third who will, in the process of time, fall away from their first station of holiness. And they are all gathered in council assembly, and all of them are in a high state of anticipation, and they wonder why Anakis has called them there into his light, and all are in their places, sitting before the council of the Erkodeshi and the Lord according to their inscription. But wait, I hear a loud but soft penetrating voice from far away, sounding like a trumpet, and the sound of it has filled all that is in my view. And everything is standing still to listen, and the voice moves to penetrate to the center of all the souls in creation. And the voice said, The second decree of creation is that all the doings of creation and all the affairs of salvation must be done by man through the power of the intervention of their agency. And all those assembled wondered what it could mean, and they all watched for Anakis to speak. And I can see that the assembly is greatly moved with much anticipation. And Anakis spoke, and he said, in parentheses, Say, we are all gathered here to counsel together before creation proceeds to its conclusion. For I have yet to create the spirits of life for the animals and man. And because mankind is the object of creation, we must proceed with careful consideration, and everything must be in order as we proceed, because our success depends on making the right decisions. In the Council of Elda, it was determined that I would create all the spirits of the children of men, and on the morrow, the day of their creation is upon us. And my question is now, where shall we create all the spirits of men? And it is very important where they are created for redemption to succeed. Reference number 12. Salvation emerged from the council of Elda. Redemption emerged from the council of heaven. And the vast multitude of the watchers of heaven stood before Anakis to witness his question. And I can sense that for all but the council of the Erechodeshi, it seems normal that Anakis should have a question in need of an answer. And this is because they had only experienced the edge of eternity, and it was hard for them to conceive that there was such a place as Elda, or what it may be like there. And this was upon them because of the influence of the edge of eternity. And it came to pass that I beheld with my eyes that Moza and Anakis conferred together, and it was not after the manner that I had seen in the council of Elda. For this time, Moza stood determined in his task of bringing righteousness which results in redemption. And at the time of the Council of Elda, heaven had not yet been created. 
And now in this council of heaven, decisions must be made, and things must be determined concerning where to create all the spirits of men, and thereby put the first decree of creation into full effect, out of an anticipation of the establishment of the second decree of creation, insomuch that Anarchus can remain our father in the face of sin, and where to create the children of men bore strongly upon just how that could be possible, and what power should be established was the question at hand. For the fatherhood of Anarchus must be firmly established in the midst of element, to be immovable in the face of sin, so that it could forever remain to be felt unhindered in all creation. And I can see that Mozart came to this council with a sure determination that it should be by the power of righteousness, and not only that, but now Mozart stood as the spokesman for all mankind, to see to it that all those who would repent could, in the end, be redeemed and be able to dwell with Anarchist and Elda for eternity. And in this way, our lovely Redeemer has absolute authority to bless us and renew us in the process of our becoming like the Prince of Righteousness. And all the concourse of heaven observed it quietly with praise in their hearts. And all were waiting for Anarchist to speak, and finally he addressed the assembly and he said, the question before us is where shall I create all the spirits of men, and what is the manner that we shall give the elements in creation form? For it is certain that all the spirits of life that I create must have a body in which to live in the elements of the earth together with me. And the spirit and body together are the soul, and in this way all the watchers of heaven are living souls together with man. In spirit and element inseparable connected is righteousness and brings a fullness of the gift of life. And it must be that no amount of sin can remove my presence from element. And my lovely children live in their bodies, in the midst of the element of my being, which can be found in all of you here. And this is so that both their spirits and bodies can be nourished to flourish in creation during all their pathway in their becoming. And all such things spring forth from my storehouse of loving kindness. And it came to pass that Moses stepped forward and made his way up to be seen by all. And he said, Father, when your creation first finds form, it will be in a place called Olam. And when your children exercise their agency in righteousness, creation will transform to become Eden. But when they use their agency to choose sin, Eden will transform once again to become the temporal earth. And the task at hand is to cause your presence to go with them into the temporal earth. And while agency came about because there is an edge to eternity, a plan of salvation has been established. For the intervention of my agency will bring the repentant back into your presence in Elda by the forgiveness of sin. And there is a second force in creation, which is the intervention of the agency of righteous mankind that may be established to make your fatherhood an eternal certainty so that righteousness can be established and prosper to bring redemption, and where you create the spirits of mankind is central to enable it. And Anakis spoke again, and he said, Wherefore, how shall we determine where to create? All the spirits of the children of men, seeing they shall dwell in Olam, or in Eden, or on the earth. And it came to pass, after Anakis posed this question, a watcher was standing by who was called Asael, and he is meteorite iron. And he stood boldly forth and said, O oh, Anarchist, will you not declare after you have created all things that all that you have created is good? And will you not consider them good, even though they transform from Olam into Eden and from Eden into the temporal world? And that being so, will you not then create all the children of men in the temporal world of the earth so they can feel at home there and so that they may be comforted that they truly belong there? seeing that they will surely go there after they sin and go astray, as it has been said. And he continued and he said, And because of their sins, they will become transformed and become subject to the limits of time and the restraints of place. And they will also have delicious afflictions there and grow old and die there. And their spirits will separate from their bodies is it not therefore desirable that both their spirits and bodies remain in the place that you have called good? It was of interest to me that there could be such a profound level of deceit in the presence of Anarchus, 
and I knew that Mozart and the Council of the Air Codes, she noticed it, but apparently Anarchus did not. And I wondered if it was because Anarchus could not anticipate evil, he being so loving and divinely holy. And while Asaya was speaking, Cabodiel was standing by, who in this case was a wise old oak tree named Ayil. And this one has been first inscribed among Cabodiel, since Olam transformed into Eden. And I recognized her to be the northern oak at the gate of Eden. And she whispered abroad with a soft voice that sounded like rustling leaves. And she said quietly, the intentions of some will be to rebel against Anarchus during the course of the earth. And their rebellions will be such that they shall desire that all men consider their sin is natural and an unavoidable part of human nature and the sinful will be greatly urged upon to not resist evil. But they will consider that they were made to sin clear from the days of their creation and they will be taught that their natural character is an enemy to Anarchus and they will accept sin and corruption and unrighteousness will abound. And in this way, many of the children of Anarchus will not pass by me to return to Eden. And I saw that these words caused a stir when the wind carried the news of her words abroad. And I saw that Asaya was pushing back at this council and by this, the way to subvert the foundations of righteousness was being laid. And by his own admission, the desired effect concerning where to create the children of men was to cause unrighteousness to prosper if it were chosen by man. And Asael continued and he said, since all men will be subject to sin, will you not see fit to create all the spirits of men upon the temporal earth so that they may be content with all that befalls them because of sin and not fall into great guilt and shame? And after Anakis heard all these sayings, he said not a word, but sat pondering them in his heart. And Moza stood forth in the midst of the light of the presence, and his gentle face radiated the light. And he was calm and confident, and he is our hero and our lovely one. And he stood there as the advocate for all men to plead with Anakis in our behalf. And Moza said, Father, I come here to speak openly on behalf of all the children of men who may sin, or who may have corrupted their way. And I come here to take the part of all the weak and fearful so that there may be found compassion for them in heaven. And so they find rich forgiveness upon the earth. And I come here before you now to lay the foundations of righteousness so that the children of men may be empowered over evil. And I say now that for the sake of righteousness, you must not create the spirits of men on the earth. And righteousness comes into play with the joining of all the spirits of life and creation together with the human souls who are the result of your loving kindness and righteousness will give rise to their holy dominion. And righteousness is the perfect harmony of fellowship man has with you and with all the living spirits of life in the element of the earth where you reside. And man and angel shall act in concert together to bless and expand their gift of life, and to sustain each one of your purposes for them, as expressed in the day you create them. And also they shall act to ensure the continuance of their walk in holiness and perfection of way during all the course of the earth. And this same force of righteousness will follow them out of Eden into the temporal world, insomuch they will never be alone. Reference number 13. This verse explains Shabua. And the season of winter was standing by, and she said, What is this that is now before my eyes, that our lovely Moza, the very son of Anarchus, the one who was pure and unspotted, should take the part of all those who sin? And who would be found to be filthy here in the presence of Anarchus? Surely this kind one of Anarchus does not need to suffer this. And it came to pass that Rahaviel spoke up and said, Moza has indeed intervened to say that the spirits of men must not be created on the earth. And he indeed intervened with his agency to see that he carries the burden of the sin of mankind for his father, for he is the prince of righteousness. And Shabbatiel, you will someday desire to share this burden with him in the form of the living water that is turned into snow, which is a cry for purity. 
And Shabbatiel said, Never have we seen such profound love. I pledge myself to come to his aid. And Rahaviel said, I will always assist you as your companion. And upon hearing the living water spoken of Kayal was there, who is the fountain of the pool of heaven, and who was inscribed first among all the fountains of the earth. And she said, Be it known this day that Mosa, in his abounding love for each and every soul who sins, has taken it upon himself to see to their salvation, and he shall teach mankind from on high, and instruct them by the Spirit to see to their salvation, he being the one who brings forgiveness for sin, and he can forgive them for being unknowing, and he can wash them clean and whole again before anarchists, by the power of righteousness, and their cleanness can in this way be infinite, and they will be clean and white as snow again, and their cleanness will be preserved because he will teach them all things in righteousness and help them remember the truth and were it not so all would be lost and he can be depended upon to do this and those who do not repent must be subject to the knowledge of all that they might have become because he was their strong advocate and those who despise reproval and will not tolerate it and consider repentance a humiliation shall remain in their wickedness, which wickedness is unrighteousness. And unrighteousness is the enemy to the gift of life. And they will some day behold the true effects of rejecting Moza and his love. And the effect of it will always be before their eyes to see to their dismay and sorrow. And his forgiveness will bring unspeakable joy. But to reject repentance will bring insufferable sorrow. And it came to pass that a watcher named Tahamiel is going to speak, and he is marble. And I can tell he is going to speak in order to try to establish his authority. And he feels intimidating, and he turned back and faced the assembly, but perhaps he dares not speak to Anarchus. And he said with a tinge of sarcasm, perhaps Anarchus could create the spirits of men in Eden, where there is no sin, but sin is possible. And this is the right place to create them so your children would feel respected and and whatever they chose to do that seems pleasing to them. And when Tahamiel was finished speaking, Mozart quietly said to his father, If you create all the spirits of men in the place where this watcher has said, then you of necessity must build into salvation the expectation that those who are redeemed back could not have eternal life, because Eden is on the edge of eternity. And you would then have a barrier between your presence and elder and where your redeemed children live and your children could not receive a true inheritance from their father. And it would come to pass that at the last day, when all shall stand before you to be judged, they could not rightly anticipate living with you in Elda, and their cries of loneliness would ascend up to you forever. And it came to pass that Anarchus was very moved at these sayings, and it seemed to all those present that it was hopeless to know where to create all the spirits of men. And Anarchus spoke, and he said, My beloved son, in light of the truth of all you have said, what is it that we shall do? To determine where to create the spirits of men, so that in the end I can live in the eternity of Elda with my children who choose to love me. And it came to pass that Mosa bowed himself down on his knee, and he said, I would bless you, Father, please let them be created in Elda. Yea, even each and every spirit of life of mankind, to include both the spirits of the watchers and the spirits of men. And let them originate in the light of your personal presence in Elda, so that in the day of their creation, not one particle of any portion of their being will be unworthy to live with you in Elda. And in this way, they can lay claim to their beginning, and this will be because my forgiveness is adequate, to make them utterly clean and uncorrupted, and not polluted in any manner. And as their Redeemer, I am up to the task of bringing them back to you. O oh, Holy Father, they must be created in Elda, so that it will be forever known that the true land of the inactivity of their souls is in the bosom of your loving kindness in Elda, and they deserve to live with you where you live, because they have repented and overcome the world of sin, and endure to remain faithful to your desires for them in the day of their creation, and in this way they will receive the blessings of infinite joy and happiness that ring out in the songs of Elda. And in this way, every little baby will be born with their spirit in Elda and have complete innocence of heart, just like their father in Elda. 
And because of this, in the end, mankind will know that they had to go against their created nature to sin and go their own way. And truth and righteousness will prosper to not be hidden at the judgment. And it came to pass that when Anarchus heard these words, he thought on them for a while. And all the watchers durst not speak any word in light of the power and intelligence of Mozart. And Tahamiel looked away from the light. And Asiel went and tried to find a shadow to stand in. But alas, there were no shadows in the light of Anarchus. And Anarchus spoke to Mozart and said, What will happen to my children when they sin and are obliged? to depart out of an awareness of my presence and element, where will they go? For there is no place where I am not. And what will be the definition of their form and the definition of all the individual forms that element takes in creation where I shall dwell with them? And upon hearing these questions from his father, Mozart stirred himself and he said, Father, the answer to all of your questions lies in the second decree of creation. And all heaven stood in silent anticipation to consider what would be said, and Mozart said, This is what we shall do. Concerning the very specific definition of all creation, including mankind, and this is the manner in which elements shall find form in creation. You, O oh Father, will create all the spirits of life in creation, and this spirit is that which determines their definition, or that is to say, the characteristics of their expression of their gift of life. And I, being a man, will give all element form. So the spirits of life that you create will have a dwelling place in creation. Therefore, you, O Father, will create all the spirits of life, yea, of every plant, of the field before it grows, and every animal before it finds breath. And all the spiritual creation will be finished by your hand in six days, and there will not yet be a man to till the ground. And I then will give all the elements in creation the forms they will take on your day of rest, and I will create the earth. And because the forms element finds at my hand are made by the man that you became, the elements of creation can transform from Olam to become Eden. And they can transform from Eden into the temporal earth in the face of sin. And your presence will remain in the elements of the temporal earth. Because a man, according to the second decree of creation, by the intervention of his agency, placed your presence there to live with your wayward children. And may all the hosts of heaven gather here understand that if Anarchus created the earth when there came sin on the part of the children of men, their spirits must literally depart away from element that is composed of his being and presence, and they would have no place to go, and Anarchus would mourn over the loss of his children forever. And it came to pass that Mozart stepped forward and said, I will bestow upon my servant Mikael, the same power of the agency of Anarchus that I have expressed. And he shall be to the watchers of holiness who are faithful in the same position with them as I am with mankind in the plan of salvation. And Mikael will establish that those among the children of men who enter into the covenant of Shabuah will be forever bonded to the Erekodeshi in the midst of the earth, never to be removed from dwelling in the midst of the living spirits of the elements of creation. And when I saw that Mozart expressed the same use of agency as that of Anarchus, I knew that he had the power to bestow it upon Mikael. And it was by these means that Mikael, as Melchizedek, was able to establish Shabuah. And Shabuah is the salvation of the Erekodeshi. And by it, they are saved from being overcome with sorrows and are redeemed to comprehend the presence of Anarchus in the temporal world. When it came to pass that Mozart began to reveal the mystery of the origin of mankind to all those assembled in the council of heaven, and he said, Holy Father, first I will give you a reason to create each and every spirit of mankind, and each one will be a great delight to your heart, and your love for each one will abound, insomuch that you will find it hard to wait to have them, even every human being during all the course of the earth. And in this way, I will give you each person to be a perfect gift, to lighten your heart and to comfort you and to be your companion in the way to walk with you, to keep you company so that you are not alone. And the reason that I give you to create each one will be their vision of created purpose and the definition 
each one will have will be that they are in your image and are your child, and they are each the object of creation, and each living soul upon the earth, including man and all the watchers of heaven, will hold within their souls four spirits of life. Their first will be the spirit of your presence, and second, the spirit of the definition that you gave their spirits in the day that you created them, and third, will be the vision of their created purpose, and lastly, will be the indwelling of my spirit and presence. And only man will have a vision of created purpose because they are the objects of creation and all the other spirits of life, to include everything else in creation, will have your spirit firstly, their definition secondly, and the vision of created purpose of each and every man thirdly, and my presence fourthly. And in this way, the living spirit of all your children will be built into the fabric of creation. And so I beheld that the understanding of two of the spirits of life arose out of the council of Elda, and the other two spirits came out of the first great council of heaven. And it came to pass that upon hearing all these things, Anarchus reached forth his right hand, and he laid hold of the golden censer of righteousness, for it is the censer of joining all the souls of the righteous to all the souls of the Urkodeshi in harmony and perfect fellowship. Reference number 14, Shabua. And righteousness is the force of power that allows Mozart to love in spite of sin, and it is that which enables mankind to join their soul with all the holy spirits of life and creation. And because the spirit of Mozart will be one of the spirits of life in all things, together with our vision of created purpose, which is our perfect self, Righteousness will empower all the intervention of agency by the repentant who embraced the loving kindness of Anarchus. And it came to pass that upon hearing this, that Anarchus worshipped with great joy, and the smoke from his censer filled all eternity, and the worship of Anarchus caused the righteous of redemption to flow out and cover all creation, even Elda and Olam and Eden, and it filled the earth, and the force of life coming from it, could not be measured nor contained, and I saw that this very force became the means Anarchus used to bestow the gift of life on all his righteous children, and Mozart became the son of his right hand, he being the prince of righteousness. And it came to pass that the smoke of the censor of righteousness had the effect that all the spirits of life became family among themselves, and the Erekodeshi called man their own kindred. Reference number 15. Shabua, in loving kindness prospered, being spread on its way by agency. And in this way, Mozart received all power both in heaven and upon the earth. And on the tablet, we can see that there is also another meaning for the fingers on the hands. The four fingers of his left hand show forth the meaning of the four directions as seen through the eyes of Mozart. And from the council of Elda until the flood, all the fingers of both hands represent the view of the four directions held by Anarchus, and after the flood, the righteous shall view the directions after the view of Moza, clear until his arm is revealed. And at the end of days, during the tribulations, when those evil days fade away with the great awakening, the directions will once again be viewed through the eyes of Anarchus. And in ancient times, this view of Anarchus empowered the righteous to return to Eden, and from the flood to the arm of the Lord, the view of Mozart allowed the righteous to endure the onslaughts of evil during tribulations. And in the end of days, it will be the view of Anarchus once again that will allow the calling forth of the arm of the Lord and the great gathering. And finally, the second coming of Mozart the Lamb and the four directions through the view of Anarchus will prevail after the final judgment in Elda with eternal life. And the covenant symbol on the palm of the right hand is pointing toward the sanctity of agency for all those who cross over to establish righteousness and thereby reveal and establish the many definitions of life. Anarchus put into all the spirits of life in the day of their creation. And the presence of the smoke of the righteousness in Elda was noised abroad in heaven. And it caused all of heaven to be still and silent for the space of a time until the end of the creation of the earth and the Erekodeshi were very sober. 
and they watched as the spirits of mankind were created, and they were looking at the ones they knew were the objects of their creation, and the ones who they were charged with being the home for, and they all knew the full extent of the meaning of righteousness that was resident in their souls. And the one-third who would fall away did not listen, and they began to think they knew a better way, and were jealous of the objects of creation. And thus we see that the council of heaven laid the foundation for righteousness, and it gave rise to the knowledge of the importance that Mozart should be the creator of the earth. And it was now understood that the second decree of creation was expressly for the purpose of putting the first decree into full and eternal effect, so that anarchists will be our father forever. And these expressions of the sanctity of agency defined eternity to now include the power of righteousness, and thus we learn the difference between absolute eternity and defined eternity. An elda is absolute eternity, and the edge of eternity is defined eternity. And while the salvation has shown forth the nature of the exercising of the sanctity of agency by anarchists to become a man, righteousness shows forth the nature of the exercising of the sanctity of agency of Mozart to be the creator. And these two examples are for us an example of how we can, as human souls and as the objects of creation, broadcast the loving kindness of Anarchus to the ends of the earth during all the course of man. But be it known that one third of the watchers of heaven rebelled and followed the example of Asael and Tahamiel and cast out from themselves two of the spirits of life, and it is the spirit and presence of Mozart in your vision of created purpose that they cast out of themselves, and they became known as the Dakar Darchi, or that is to say, the fallen bullies, and they hate both you and Mozart, and they are intent to rob you of your gift of life, and would forbid you to have the sanctity of agency, but through the Prince of Righteousness and the fullness of the Urkodeshi, Anarchus can still speak to us, and he always feels our perfect selves, insomuch that every hair of our heads is numbered to him. And Anarchus, by the power of his son, can love us in spite of our sins. And he will forgive us when we fall short. And we can be his faithful children and attend to his every desire and live in the very bosom of his loving kindness. And thus we see that our unchanging father anarchist is faithful to be an example for his children so that we may know how to lay hold firmly of the powers of righteousness and salvation. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabua, Chapter 2. Shalom. The Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabua, Chapter 3. And it came to pass that after all of the marvelous light and understanding already received, we were all deeply moved at the blessing of the Lord, that he would see fit to reveal these wonders to us through Urim. And it came to pass that when we next took up Urim, amazingly, I found the vision started up right where it left off. And I saw Debariel leave to return to where she arose. And she was a column of light that came up out of the campfire. And when she moved, it sometimes appeared that she had the shape of a person. But she was a watcher of holiness, not a person. And as she left, she turned and said, I am the guardian of agency. And I immediately began to wonder what would happen next. And as I looked, I found I was on a mountain, and casting my eyes about, I recognized the conditions of Olam and everything I saw. And I said to the Lord, O oh Lord, please show me what I might see, so I can learn how to speak for the Urko de she, and so I can speak for them to all the peoples of the earth. And as I viewed this mountain, it began to dawn on me that because of the light of the angel de Barrio, my eyes were open. And I was about to behold with Urim a vision of the view of creation as seen by the Urakodeshi. And I was struck with wonder because I did not know it could be known that a man could see creation through their eyes. And I realized that the greatest desire of my life was now opening up before me. For since childhood, I had desired more than anything else in life to find the ability and opportunity to be able to put into words 
the true grandeur and majesty of the love of anarchists in creation that is continually presented there for all to see if they had eyes to see it and a heart to feel. And now it was coming before me to behold, oh my, all I can say is, may the Lord bless me to say it and bless it to be able to be heard. And I know such things can only be ultimately taught by the spirit of the Lord. And I held my breath and looked and I see that I am standing on a great mountain and the view before me is not what one would expect either in what is seen or felt because the mountain is just bare dirt for as far as the eye can see and because the feelings here of Olam are something no human has ever felt outside of seeing it in a vision from the Lord I will try to explain it and what I am seeing and feeling are the conditions of Olam reference number 16 Strong's Concordance number 5769 and the mountain is very high with the summit a ways off to the north from me and all I see is bare light colored dirt with many rocks scattered about. And the whole view before me feels alone and cut off in isolation and dull of feeling and listless. Yet all that I see is alive, but not vibrant with the gift of life. And there is the spirit of separation here where nothing is joined to anything and loneliness abounds. And I suppose this view would feel terrible to someone, but it is not terrible or evil. It is simply the beginning of creation before all the wonderful things we see and know about our earth were formed. And the spirit of anarchist permeates everything in my sight, but nothing has enough life in it to know him. And what is here is void of any definition or anything to make it individually unique. So the mountain does not know it is a mountain. And it does not know it will become a very great mountain that will one day be in the heart of Eden. And the mountain does not know that the substance of its being is composed of the presence of anarchists. And it does not know that the shape of its being was formed by the man that anarchists became. There is so much happiness laying ahead for this mountain. And you will see that it will become a living soul. And the joys of life will utterly fill it to the full. And it will seem... And praise the Lord for the life it will be given. And the wind will whistle over the top of it. And it will find the definition that it is a mountain. Who is the body of the burden of God. And it shall see marvelous things. And witness important acts of God. Even some of the most pivotal doings of anarchists. Ever to be seen during the course of the earth. And I see that the earth is dry like powder. And it seems as though it has never been rained upon. And as I look, I can now see the dust swirling around because the wind is now blowing upon the mountain and with the wind comes rain and snow. And I can feel the spirit of the mountain begin to stir at the presence of the wind and rain and it begins to have an awareness of its own and it feels that it is not completely alone. And the water began to make little rivulets and passageways through the dust. And as the water continued to flow, the mountain began to have a shape that embraced the water with love. And it came to pass that I began to be aware that light was shining on the mountain and the passageways of the water had shadows and snow fell in abundance and was a mantle of gentle beauty and the sun melted the snow to cause an increase in the rivulets of water. And with these changes, the mountain grew in its interest to try to observe all that was taking place upon her and round about below. And as I continued to look with interest, I saw grass beginning to grow beside the rivulets, and further down there could be seen shrubs and plants springing up. And the further down the water ran, the larger the rivulets became only to form streams of water. And far down the side of the mountain beside these streams, trees could be seen coming up only to extend downward to become forests. And the mountain became more and more aware and the dullness began to dissipate and the mountain began to have things it was interested in observing and it began to have many questions and there were sounds that became comforting to it like sounds of the wind and the gurgling of the water and the cries of the loons and giant woodpeckers and the eagles and the thunder sounded and echoed giving life to the canyons that ran down her sides. And the mountain began to wonder about things and it began to ask many questions and to have a desire to know. 
And one day it came to pass that the mountain was drawn to look far away into the distance, at the hills in the midst of the forest, and a little speck moving about caught her eye. And never had anything been so captivating as that which the mountain felt when looking upon this little speck. And the speck was our first father, Yatsikai, and he was very young, and she could not take her eyes off of him, and she could hardly wait for the sun to rise to bring a new day so that she could perhaps see him again and many times she would discover him moving about and she found that she could think of nothing else until she could discover him and i was taken aback by what the mountain felt when looking upon yatsika and it was not his size he being so small in her view nor was it something he was doing but it was his shape that riveted her gaze and was very noteworthy to the mountain and he became all that she desired to see and I do not think that the mountain knew why it was so drawn to him, but there he was, and all her attention was upon him, and the man became all she could think of, and she was always aware of all of his movements, and she watched for him every day with a sense of longing. And it came to pass that one day the mountain saw that Yatsukat was closer than usual, and I wondered greatly at this, and I began to watch very intently. And I saw Yatsukad make his way up the side of the mountain until he reached the timber line. And he gazed intently upon the mountain as he sat upon a rock to look about. And he made expressions of delight at the sight of her. And the mountain trembled inside at the sight of him. And she felt the presence of his being very strongly up close. And she felt that accompanying him was a wonderful feeling such as she had never felt before and tranquility and peace entered into her spirit and she was falling in love with yatsikat and they both became fully attentive at encountering one another and yatsikat felt her spirit by the power of the spirit of moza that was with him and he wanted very much to share with her an inner part of his soul and he spoke directly to her with both his words and his feelings and notwithstanding his was a gentle and soft voice it penetrated her soul to the very center, for she had never heard such sounds, nor felt such feelings before, and yet it was like she had always known him, and Yasukad was falling in love with the mountain. Reference number 17. The feeling in this narrative reminds us of the wedding supper of the Lamb with both the righteous and creation. The Erko she fall in love with each of us, starting at our birth and childhood. And Yatsukat said, My lovely one, you are a mountain, and you shall be a special companion to Anarchist, who is the substance you are made of, and you shall be strong to come to his aid, to help him with his heavy burdens in the time of his need. And your name is Harabi. Reference number 18, Strong's Concordance number 2042 to 2043. And you shall be the foremost mountain upon the earth, to be inscribed first. And you will be given the gift of discerning the needs of Anarchus that come from his enduring love for his children as they become during the course of their agency. For many will lose sight of the proper use of the spirits of light he has put into all things to use the elements of creation correctly. And I beheld the spirit of Mozart respond to the invitation of Shabuah and enter in to fill Harari. And he took with him the vision of Yatsuka to dwell in her together with the other two spirits of life. And immediately the mountain came fully to life and she was transformed in her spirit. And she looked about with new eyes and her eyes were blinking at the sudden intensity of the light. And it was as though she had never seen before and her soul was utterly filled with the grandeur and wonders of Eden. And a huge force of love erupted to flow out and to cover the land of Eden with a mantle of purity all coming from her strong spirit. And the mountain began to rejoice and to celebrate the life she had been given, and she was born again, with the knowledge of what she meant to Anarchist and to the man, and I was very moved at the sight of it. And it came to pass that the wind greeted Harari and said, I have heard from the trees that you are a mountain. You are so strong that no force of wind can affect you. And the wind, who was the first Ericota she to enter and to transform into Eden, began to tumble forward with the news. And I could see mountains in the distance, seemingly without number, and the wind danced about 
and swirled around them with the news, and all the mountains received the news gladly, and they too were transformed from Olam into Eden. And they too were born again to have the gift of life as the news spread. And the gift of life came when Mosa, the man who created them, together with the man who was the object of that creation, entered into them to abide there to give them the gift of life. And thus their first part of being born again was accomplished. And all the mountains of the earth became a significant force in Eden, and the garden of love grew. And because my whole soul was taken up with viewing these events, I was startled to see Hava making her way up the mountain. And I looked to see if Harari saw her. And she was looking intently at her also. And she saw a gentle little person come dancing her way along and singing a wondrous song of joining. And the sound of it was like no other sound she had ever heard. And the beauty of the moment will never leave my eyes. And the mountain was fixed upon Hava, and Harari was amazed at how different this little person felt from the man. And a strong spirit of kinship awakened in the soul of Harari, and Harari embraced Hava fully. And the feelings of the dancing feet of Hava filled an empty place in her soul, and she could hardly contain herself, and she wanted to take Hava into her soul, and Harari was falling in love with Hava. And in the dance, Hava swayed to and fro, reaching upward with her hand to lay hold of this and bestow it upon that with her hand reaching downward. And Hava had been pausing to look at the far-reaching view of the creations of Anarchists far below her. And it came to pass that Hava, our first mother, looked up upon Harari and she stood gazing upon one another for a while and their eyes met and their hearts became one. And it came to pass that Hava saw the melting snow and the revelets running down. And she said to Harari, I am a woman because I am taken out of man. And you are also a woman who is taken out of the earth. And you are the life giver of all that is before you to nourish them and to give them life with your living and lustral waters because you join them together in marvelous love. And Hava danced her way closer, and she reached up to lay hold of the waters, and she reached down to bestow it upon the grasses and herbs of the field. And you are the source of my happiness because your waters of Simga called out to me and led me to find my Yatsikad. And in this way, you have joined me to life, and you are very gracious and lovely, and I shall name you Rishoni. Reference number 19. Strong's Concordance, number 7224. Because you are my ancient ancestor and have given me life and happiness, and Hava was falling in love with the mountain. And I beheld the spirit of Mosa go to enter into Rishoni together with the vision of Hava, and the soul of Rishoni sprang into a deeper fullness of life, because she now knew who loved her and who needed her love. And she had the indwelling spirit of joining all life into a community of loving kindness with mutual respect and support. And now I can see a mountain that is whole with a powerful spirit to love life and counsel any who would seek to understand the life they have been given. And Hava loved Rishoni, but she did not at this time call her mother because she had no concept of a mother until she had given birth to baby Kenny. And after she left Eden, she began to view Rishoni as her mother. And she said to her, I am the mother to all the living among men. And you are the mother of all the spirits of life of the earth for Anakis. And for me, and Rishoni rejoiced greatly day and night. And thus the second part of being born again was accomplished because now she knew what Anakis meant to her. And it came to pass that Hava in her old age just before she departed from Nod, declared to Rishoni in her departing, and she said, I have come to know the waters that erupt at the birth of a child are indeed like the waters that flows down from you to give life and to sustain it, and your living waters like the milk of a mother. You are my ancient mother in whom I take great delight, and our souls together shall be joined to all that accept the gift of life upon the earth. And her departing was hard for them both. And how long creation was Olam is not known because 
God has no time, and time came only with sin, and how long creation was eating was certainly shorter in duration, albeit there was still no time until our first parents sinned and left Eden behind. And with the emergence of sin, the conditions of bliss and Eden were changed, and Eden was transformed to become the temporal earth that we know, and we live being surrounded by sin, and we also sin and our being subject to time and the cycles of life and death only drew us closer to the source of our salvation. And it came to pass that I was so moved by that which I beheld with Aaron that I wanted to see more so I could grasp what the Ericota she felt and experienced in their process of creation. So I once again turned to the Aaron for a closer look by seeing through the eyes of God. And I have been much moved upon by that which came before me with Aaron. And I am directed by the Lord to make an account of it more fully. And my eyes began to see marvelous wonders of love, seemingly to all encompassing to communicate. And my ears began to hear words of distinction. And my heart was filled with gratitude for the hope and assurance of the plan of creation by Anarchist. And I asked the Lord to take me back to view more of how the holy angels of heaven, even the Ericota she viewed creation. Think of it, how did the grass and trees and rocks, the hills, rivers, clouds, and oceans experience creation? And what is their account of it? I had to know more. And it came to pass that I once again went before the Lord to look with Aaron, and the Spirit of the Lord drew near. And he began to instruct me, and he said, All that can be seen was created by my hand, because I am the man that Anarchist became. And all that has been created was meant to have life. And life has been created for man by Anarchist and myself together. But take heed that you do not dismiss the role that man has played in creation. And do not think you know, but listen with care of seeking the spirit. Number six in parentheses. So you can be taught from on high. And the Lord continued and he said, All the spirits of life now before you cannot know in and of themselves who they are, nor what their purpose is. In order to know these things, they must first encounter both the man that created them, together with the man and woman who are the subject of their creation, or that is to say, those for whom they were created. And this is so that they may be instructed and awakened by the spirit of both the man who created them and mankind for whom they are created. And the spirits of life in creation must feel with them and learn from them concerning the essence of their beings and of how they may shed abroad the infinite and uncompromising love that they are made of. And for this reason, there will be a day of instruction. Reference number 20, Shabua. And thus each and every spirit of life in the created world must encounter mankind, both male and female, together with the presence of their creator, who have been entrusted by anarchists with the task of knowing and defining all the spirits of life that are to be the home of man. And in this way, mankind, by the power of righteousness and salvation, can be a holy influence over the character of their worldly home. What loving father would deny his children having a say in what kind of a home they would spend their lives in? And after hearing this instruction, I found myself once again viewing the mountain, hoping that I could see more deeply the expressions of the love of our Father and how it is to manifest itself in our world. And also I hope to learn how we can assess and direct the use of that love to empower the righteous in these dark times at the end of days. And the vision continued and the view of the mountain is once again before me after her encounter with our first parents and the man, and she is rejoicing, and the view before my eyes will warm my heart forever. After Yatsuka and Hawa left, Rishoni began to be filled with desires, arising out of the love of anarchists that made up her soul, because of the intervention of the agency of Moza and our first parents. And Rishoni asked the snow if the snow knew who she was, and what her task was, and inquired to see if the snow knew who her friends and family were. And she longed for our first parents to come again, to instruct and love the snow. And Yasukat and Hava heard her longings and began to visit her often. 
and they told the snow that it was friends with the sun and the warm winds, and the snow learned it was a voice of invitation to purify oneself, and the rivulets called the snow mother. And I could see that the snow took delight in her many children, and she praised Anakis that her children were the living water, and they could be counted upon to be diligent in their provisions of life. And when the warm winds of summer came, there was much rejoicing to be heard with the dripping and trickling water, and Roshoni was happy. And the rocks would laugh when the revelets tickled them, and the living water would bubble and gurgle along its way to give life. And the sound of the stream's awakening in the spring is one of the 24 conditions that brings the strong presence of Anarchist even to this very day. And the sounds of it are the sounds of life. And the waters of the streams and rivers had a multitude of friends, and the moss and the periwinkles and the dipper birds are bonded with it with a bond of love that speaks of heaven, and one must be of a cold heart indeed who cannot feel it, to be nourished with the spirit of life that they can bring. And the living water was friend to everyone, and Moza was the name given by our first parents to the man that Anarchist became, because the essence of his being is precisely that of the living water. And it came to pass that I began to see that everything loved Yatsikad and Hava, and all the spirits of life and creation looked upon them with abundant love, because they viewed them as the objects of their creation, and every person ever to be born upon the earth is looked upon in the same manner by them, whether their parents are righteous or wicked, and every tree we walk by sees us to be a child of Anarchus, and their love for us is as expansive as the sunset is wide. And I saw that the Erekodeshi hover over us, like a hen does its chicks, and they delight to surround us with overflowing love and adoration. And when we sleep, they embrace us like we would our loved ones. And when we awaken, they enfold us into the bosom of their loving kindness. And all the wind and clouds love to follow us around to be our delightful companions, giving us breath and showering us with their benevolence. And it came to pass that I saw that the trees would tell the wind where Yatsikat and Hava were, and chatter abroad about what they were doing. And all the living souls in creation delighted in news of our first parents. And the hills would whisper, and they are at the river Simca. Or the grass would quietly say, Now they are with us eating berries. And it is well known by the watchers of holiness where each one of us is. And what we are doing in the watchers of holiness are known as the angels of heaven, but we call them the Erekodeshi. Yea, all the Erekodeshi are excited to hear the news of the doings of the children of Anakis, and the holy ones stand in awe of the objects of creation. And be it known that some day when it is time to account for our use of agency, we will be saddened and embarrassed to know they loved us in this way, even while we were engaged in acts of disrepute. I only hope they can turn their faces away to limit the scope of their sorrow upon encountering the loved ones of Anarchus doing such deeds. But again, think of what it will mean when we learn the truth of these things, to discover just how much we are loved and cherished by the living souls in creation. What an unfathomable surprise lays in store for the unknowing in that day. What an indescribable day of happiness for us to be fully bonded to our lovely ones in creation, both in this life and when we are carried to the other side at our passing. And it came to pass that I heard a great sound of praising, and I wondered what it could be, and someone said, Kaya, the fountain that Simca has the news. And when I heard it, I knew why they were all rejoicing, for Anakis was marrying Yatsikat and Hava in their wedding, and with that most holy joining before all the hosts of heaven, even was come to the full. And every living spirit Anakis had created that had found their form to be a body for them to live in, found a home in the elements of the earth, and Shabuah had run its course in Eden, and now every soul there was complete, and now had all four spirits of life resident in their souls, and creation had itself become a living soul called the earth. And I saw a marvelous sight indeed, because my eyes were allowed to see that at the sight of their wedding, Erico Dushi had it made known to them that they too were male and female, with the same holiness that God meant for those made in his image to have. And the result was a great 
upwelling of love for one another, which spread among the Erechodes she and all those in creation embraced one another in a way they will not enjoy again until the end of days, when the arm of the Lord is revealed and the righteous are gathered unto Zion. And I saw the very real truth that a holy wedding has the purpose by anarchist himself to be a special time for us to signal the Erko de she, that we belong to them and that they have the charge of our watch care. And they are to look to us for instruction each day how to apply their love for that day. And when the Erko de she find fornication, they become confused and cannot tell who to watch over or listen to or who to protect and defend causing fierce winds of sorrow to blow to the destruction of the wicked. And when the Erechotes she see parents abandon their children, they only see Olam, and they walk away leaving the unknowing parents to their fate. And the Erechotes she mourn greatly for the children, and droughts from the lack of living water are a result of their grief over children. So be aware of the central human value of the sanctity of marriage, and embrace it at all costs. For it binds you and your children to all the riches of the love of Anarchist that is resident in creation, and you will be preserved and nourished and protected, and the angels of heaven will be standing by to take your part during your times of trouble. And the objects of creation were a never-ending source of praise and thankfulness, and all the Erechodeshi awoke to their holy duties as the sacred home for mankind, by the example of the sanctity of marriage that was brought before their eyes by Anarchist when he performed the wedding of our first parents. And seeing this, the Erechote she awoke to the rich companionship they had together in their sanctity of marriage, and all creation deeply loved their little ones, and they took delight in baby things, and the trees and herbs of the field loved the seeds of each other, and the wind was delighted to have the task of scattering them abroad. And in this way, the love of Anarchus prospered and was magnified greatly in the midst of the earth. And life filled the earth, and the dullness of the parents in Olam was done away by the life in Eden. And no father or mother in Eden would ever abandon their young. And now when the power of love that Anarchus chose to feel for us at the edge of eternity spilled out and flowed over, all the concourse of heaven bore record of the loveliness of the Son of God, who the ancients called Mozart the Lamb, and he is the living water. And the angel is going to speak again, and she is saying, There are four spirits of life that protect and safeguard and promulgate agency and salvation through righteousness. And by definition, righteousness is a right relationship between man and and all the spirits of life in creation. And life in creation is one cohesive society consisting of anarchists, mankind, and the Erechodeshi. And we are seen by the Erechodeshi and by anarchists to be one family, and we are an integral part of a society that includes all the Erechodeshi. And I will list the 24 leaders here. For there are said to number 400 spirits of creation with 24 leaders. And I list them here in the order of their inscription as it was known in Eden and all through ancient times. And the first three in each direction are the council of Elda. And in the east there are fountains and fire and thunder and rain and dew and springtime. And in the south there are rocks and mountains and hills and animals and fruit in summer. And in the west, there is the wind and trees and rivers and clouds and grass and autumn. And in the north, there is the sun and oceans and stars and the moon and the holy calendar and winter. And while we are a part of the larger society in creation, each of the Erechodeshi have their own societies. For example, all mountains are a society unto themselves as are all of the individual groups of Erechodeshi listed above. And the spirit of life that resides in a mountain is part of the spiritual association with all mountains. Yet, each mountain is an individual with its own unique calling and purpose as a mountain. And as human beings, we are the same way. And while we each one have a human spirit together with all humans, each of us is unique in the same way. 
and the immense love of anarchists has this effect of uniqueness on every single thing in creation. And because his love is the source of all our spirits of life, both mankind and the Arakodashi all are given dignity, each and every one in their own right. And that which sets mankind apart is that we are the only ones created in the image of God. And to add to that, our dignity encompasses being created perfect. And our natural self is like Anarchist, our father, and our natural self rightly and by inheritance belongs in Elder. And so the first of the four spirits of life in us is the spirit of Anarchist. And because we are the objects of creation, or that is to say, creation was made for us to be our home with the Anarchist, the first spirit of life and all the individual spirits of life in creation is that of the presence of Anarchist. And the spirit of Mozart is strong within us if we choose him to be the second spirit of life in us. And he is there as the living water to continually give us life through our interaction together with him, which takes the form of reproval, repentance, and forgiveness. And the power of salvation in the living water flows naturally and efficiently through those three acts of companionship, both in him and us in all our moments of life, to prepare us to return to live with our father Anarchus and Elda, and the presence of Moza in us, sustains the dignity of our natural goodness by his ability to forgive. And because we are the children of Anarchus and he created us with us being a special gift given to him for specific and unique reasons, the third spirit of life in us is in fact that very vision of created purpose, and the fourth spirit of life in us is simply your being created as human beings with the instinct for survival and the tendency to seek dominion for the welfare of our families. And we are viewed this way by both the Dakar Darchi and the Erko Dashi, as well as the host of those who have departed from our temporal world, who are called angels in the stations of heaven. And it is this spirit of life in us that causes us to instinctively want to survive and live whether we are good or evil. And when this fourth spirit of life is all that dwells in us, together with the spirit of Anarchus, because we have rejected the spirit of our own vision of created purpose and also Mozart of the Lamb, if we then reject this fourth spirit, leaving only the spirit of Anarchus in us, then we feel compelled to take our own life and no longer strive to live and survive. And it is critical to understand that fourth spirits of life in the Erkodeshi are different in one important way. For the Erkodeshi have no vision of created purpose of their own, but they have ours together with the other three. These being the spirit of Anarchus, the spirit of Mozart, the spirit of our vision of created purpose, and whatever spirit they are, according to their individual definition and creation, whether it be a rock, a tree, a cloud, or a hill. And it is important to grasp the reality that your spirit lives in all the Erekotashi, making it natural for them to love you and be well acquainted with you and to know why you were created. And for this reason, their expectations of you are ever a source of reproval that should not be dismissed. And bear in mind that the Dakar Darchi have once and for all rejected and cast out our vision and the spirit and presence of Mosa, leaving only two spirits of life in them. And if you allow them to influence you to reject your own spirit of life after you have rejected Mosa, then you cannot be who you were created to be. And all of our becoming is defined by our interaction between these four spirits in us. And there are two expressions of agency, or that is to say, of the process of becoming. The first is the process of becoming through agency that is done by all the watchers of heaven to include both the Erekodashi and the Dakar Darchi in their process of becoming as such that because they have no vision of created purpose of their own, their agency can be fulfilled by sevening and that is making a sure determination and repeating it seven times. Reference number 21, Strong's Concordance number 7620 number 7651. And after that, all the Darkar Darchi and the Erko Dashi find their pathway permanently set 
whether they have chosen for good or for ill. And the Erkodeshi chose good, and the Darkardarchi chose ill. And thus evil is always evil and retains its very nature through all the course of the earth. And good is always good and retains its very nature throughout the course of the earth also. And all these determinations were accomplished during the first seven generations of mankind. And because of this, the Erkodeshi now do not sin, but they abide the law of Anarchist. And the Dark Archi will find no forgiveness and cannot be saved by any law or act of redemption. The acts of their sevening being the unforgivable sin, having completely rejected the spirit and presence of Moza the Lamb, which is the only way back to Elda. But for mankind, because they have a spirit of life that belongs to them, it being their vision of created purpose, mankind can only lose their agency by sin, and their vision of created purpose can only be infringed upon by agency in their acts of becoming. And mankind can act to seven themselves by determining to do acts of holiness seven times, to support, to build, and to nourish agency over and over throughout their lives, for example, my wife and I have sevened ourselves eight times over in the sanctity of our marriage. So it is imperative when raising up our children unto the Lord that we teach them and influence them to repeat holy behavior and commit to it over and over, even seven times and more, and to do it again through each and every phase of their lives. And if you do this so that holiness becomes their habit, you will firmly safeguard their visions of created purpose, and you will have the joys of seeing them return someday into the loving arms of their heavenly Father. And if you see them seven themselves with evil acts, your days will be filled with sorrow, and you can have little children by the time they are seven years old who are good and gentle and caring and loving and who share like moats of the Lamb. And they can begin to commit themselves and seven themselves, and great will be your joy in heaven. And every phase in our becoming can be treated in this manner, in our youth, in our marriages, in our parenting, and grandparenting. All can be solidly reinforced and supported by our righteous acts of seventy. And so we find these two paths we can take in the course of our becoming. And the Lord is respectful of our choices, even when they burden him down heavily, and he is so lovely that he still has no animosity even for the wicked. And thus ended the words of the angel to me regarding the four spirits of life. And it came to pass that after seeing all these things, my eyes were opened to a marvelous truth that will add further to your understanding of how to join with the Lord in creation and also to know how the Erico does she think and view you in this world. And after Kenny killed his brother, he and his wife Awan, abandoned their people and all of the Erkodeshi, and in effect, they returned to Olam in their hearts, for they surely had denied Moza, and cast him out of their hearts, and they certainly abandoned their visions of created purpose to cast away that spirit of life. So all that remained to them was the presence of Anarchus, in the element of their bodies, in the spirit of their being, in the image of God, with the urge for survival." And the Spirit said to me that Olam is hell for those who abandon the Lord after they have lived either in Eden or upon the earth. And the conditions of Olam become the definition of hell with its loneliness and separation when those conditions are chosen by the use of agency and hell will be done away after the judgment only to be replaced by the conditions of the abyss. And now I must report that important knowledge has come to me while seeing the process of creation as viewed by the Erkodeshi, for while beholding the joyous response they displayed, and upon viewing the effects of the wedding of our first parents, I heard marvelous sounds erupting in Eden, and those sounds that filled creation were the sounds of life and of the joys of living. And the tongue cannot speak of it adequately. One must have ears to hear such sounds, and they are the laughter of children at play, or the tender whisper from a father to his child, or the gentle song that arises from the hearts of the thankful, and the sound of the waves of the sea, the sounds of a gurgling brook, the sounds of birds singing, 
or the song a whistling toad sings to her babies. And all such sounds are the sounds of life. And while such sounds often pass by our notice, for the Ercota she, they are central to their happiness and sense of well-being. And they are strongly motivated by these sounds in all their relationships together, and most importantly with us. It is so even though we are entirely unaware of what they are feeling and how they are responding because of sounds. And in Eden, all the sounds of life prospered and lay like a mantle of peace upon creation. And all creation is very sensitive to sound. And into this pleasant scene, the devil came crashing into the trees of Eden, and he is a meteorite. And the loud explosive sound was frightening, and his landing tore into the hillside with sounds that shook the earth. And they were the sounds of death. And the meteorites started a fire. And it was a putrid fire with crackling sounds that led one to feelings of dismay. And the trees and hillside wanted to hide because of the sounds and run away from the violence. And the feelings that accompanied the noise were strange indeed in Eden. And our first mother screamed and fled in fear, which was the first fear felt in Eden. And the first sounds of death issuing forth from the image of God. And she was expressing the feelings of all creation. And the rocks of the river Simca saw that the meteorite felt separate and alone and very unclean. And the rocks cried out for someone to save them. And they asked for a redeemer to protect them from this strange rock that intruded into their peaceful Eden. And their cries were the sounds of death because they did not know that they already had a redeemer. And the rocks of Simca cried out, and the fountain wept for fear. And a voice from heaven said, He calls himself Simenaza, but your name for him is bad. Reference number 22, Strong's Concordance number 905 and 907. Because he is separated from life and apart from the truth, and he is joined to the sounds of death. And he will be the chief of the city of Senacio, which is a city founded upon the sounds of death. All you Urkodeshi, beware of him, and take care of your Atsikat and Haba, who are your treasure. And do not allow the sounds of death to remain in their tender hearts. And it came to pass that Bad began to rebel against the definition of all the other rocks and against womanhood. And bad is the original name for the devil, and it was given to him by the Lord for the Erko to sheep. And bad is not the opposite of good. Bad is the opposite of purity. Bad is the definition of unclean. And bad is the description of separation and alienation. And it came to pass that all those among the watchers who chose to follow him became just like him and were known as his angels or that is to say, the Dakar Darchi, and one-third of the watchers of heaven followed to fall away with bad. And voice of the Lord from heaven continued, and he said to the Erkodashi who were assembled in their sorrow, I will comfort you, for I am your Redeemer. The twelve among you who are the council of Elda will be tasked to address the truth and to expose bad and his sounds of death, and you will be an important guide to use your voices to inform the righteous counsels of men regarding their course in their efforts to avoid those life conditions that give rise to the sounds of death. And you also will be the leaders of a city, even the dwelling place of Anakis in the temporal world. And that city is called Ma'in. Reference number 23, Zion. And thus were all the Urkodeshi given the very direct task of safeguarding the righteous from the sounds of death and multiplying the sounds of life. And there are three among you who will be stationed on your council in each direction, and they shall inform those on the council of the righteous among men when anarchist has a need to commission them to manage the sounds in creation for the righteous councils in the communities of Ma'in. And this council shall abide during all the course of the earth, so we can count their names one by one. 
and expect them to perform this task for us. So listen to this counsel of Elda and expect them to be filled with reproof for making or allowing any sounds of death. And it came to pass that all the Arakotashi were comforted and those on the council wondered what their other duties were with the council of Ma'in. And the Lord said, your other duties are virtue and it is virtue that will safeguard the sounds of life. And the Arakotashi said with one voice, what is virtue? And the Lord said, look and see. And all the Arakotashi looked and they beheld the time when Bad was chief of the city of Sinasio, and he was not loyal nor faithful to those in his city, but he fed off of their feelings that make lies, and he was nourished by their feelings of deception and cunning, and he was insidious, and he loved the feelings of the greed that motivate thieves, and it was delicious to him, and he was drawn to devour the feelings of hate like a meal. And lust was delightful for him, and killing was his goal in all things, because he hated the gift of life, and he is the enemy of purity. And bad fed on these feelings wherever they were found, like a vulture upon a carcass. And like them he cared nothing for the carcass and cast it from him when he was finished. And upon hearing all this, I wondered why bad would abandon the wicked and lose the ones he had with him after leading them astray, but bad is void of loyalty toward anything, and he only has attachments to use for his own ends. Before he discards them utterly with no remorse, and many there will be among men who call him father and pattern their lives after him. And bad fed on these feelings of evil wherever they are found, and he would go from one source of them to another, and he would up and leave the wicked, leaving them lost and humiliated and in a rage, after leading them to their spiritual death, and bad hovers over those among men who feel these things. So be careful to disassociate yourself from the sounds of death. And thus when the Arakotashi viewed all these things, they knew what virtue is, and it was clear to them that virtue is to be faithful and loyal and honest and diligent and to be harmless and to accompany companions and strangers in their time of trouble. And they love the discipline it takes to avoid lust. And they would not pursue the satisfaction of possessions, nor would they seek to find dominance over their fellows to oppress them. But they loved freedom and the sanctity of agency and ever sought to safeguard the gift of life in all things by issuing forth the sounds of life. And the Erekotashi began to nourish and provide for Yatsikad and Hava with a new and fresh determination in their hearts by making the sounds of life fill their encampment, and they saw to it that they might not stumble or fall to be hurt, and thus cry aloud. And they watched over them all during the course of their lives, to see that they not feel anything to do with contention or confrontation, which could bring the sounds of death, because Anarchus grieves at the sounds of death. And they fed our first parents with diligence, so no sign of hunger could be heard, and they brought to them delightful occasions of rest and showed them beautiful things to see. So they could hear happy exclamations and they determined that they would see to it that each day would be greeted with delightful singing of songs of joy by the birds of the morning and the softness of the birds singing in the evening. And all this spilled out virtue into Eden and the sounds of life were magnified in Eden, and the sounds of life for the Erekotashi became the foundation of the gift of life and a strong signal of the presence of intelligence. And the sounds of death became the foundation of ignorance in the eyes of the Erekotashi, and also depravity and laziness prospered with the lack of virtue in Sinasio, and loud noise and raucous music flowed out of Sinasio, and it was not music made out of instruments made of the Erekotashi, but instruments made to please the Darkardichi, and the sounds of shouting and contention and weeping and sorrow and bickering born of fornication prospered in the world of Sanasio, and accusations were their watchword. And thus the Erekotashi declared that they would choose virtue, and the sounds of life were their gauge to determine their success, but the Darkardachi chose sin and corruption, and they took great delight in the sounds of death. And this was their signal of declaration to commitment in the first great seventy. 
And the council of the Er Kodeshi moved out in creation with a sure determination of good. And from that day on, they taught virtue with diligence and patience. And the righteous were not ever rude before the God of heaven by making loud noises. And infants who are close to anarchists are afraid of loud noises because of this. And these things have followed down from one generation to another because of these teachings of the Er Kodeshi. And there were times that the council of the Er Kodeshi taught their fellows who were new and seasonal in the temporal world. And they would ask the righteous to help them teach but they were distressed because the righteous did not as yet have the means to do so, for they needed the day of instruction. And I knew their remedy would come with the sevenfold covenant of Shabua that would be established in the course of time by the hand of Melchizedek. And while the Erkodeshi tended to the watch care of the righteous, the Darkardeshi hovered over Kene and Awan, because there was nowhere else that they could find the feelings which they sought to feed on and be aware that when we have such feelings, the forces of evil, together with their selfish desires, will seek us out like a vulture and we become their carcass to feed upon. And when Yatsikad and Hava left Eden, the air coated she went gladly with them because they were their loved ones and the angels of heaven danced with delight to go before them into what was the unknown for all of them. And the Urkodashi went before them, scouting out the way, and they were unafraid, and they stayed around them day and night. And the hills had the pleasure to count their footsteps upon them, and they took note of the objects of the eternal love of Anarchus passing by their way. And to this day, those hills know where the first steps of our first parents can be found. And they hold that the steps of the righteous are a holy place all during the course of the earth, and they seek to live there. But the Darkardachi were afraid to leave Eden, and it was they who were cast out. In the very moment, the cedar tree became dark, and our ancient parents were not cast out. But Anarchus was sorrowful that our first parents had to leave Eden, and they had to leave, because there were no restraints upon sin in Eden. And had they continued to dwell there, sin would have presided in paradise. And the Darkardachi viewed themselves as cursed unto death and held that they were rejected, and it only fueled their desires to be strong in their wickedness. And the Darkardashi hated the restraints put upon them that they found in the temporal world for goodness and holiness and purity and love are spiritual qualities that must be sought after by man in the temporal world. And the Darkardashi would never seek after these qualities, but righteous mankind with their agency earnestly sought after them, and in Eden, the Darkardashi had the advantage in that the environment, and it was such that all their actions were spiritual. And there was as yet nothing temporal and no distinction known between sin and holiness. And so it was the Darkardashi who viewed themselves as having been cursed to death and cast out of Eden. And they felt rejected and completely bewildered with the onset of becoming temporal. And all this trauma coming to them caused them to become embittered. And their bitterness was enlarged because they had a long wait for some human to use their agency to choose sin and thereby join with them to give them a place in the temporal world. And their ability to find a place in the temporal world came to them very slowly because Yatsikat and Hava may never have sinned again in all their long lives. And the reason it is known that Kine, who they call Cain, ruled over them is because of his horrible sin of murder he being the only source of place for them. And finally, evil had something to feed on and bad lusted after the feelings of shame. And by this time, all of us were very weary because of the intensity of the vision. So we ended looking with Urim for a while and went about our daily task. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabuah, Chapter 3. Shalom. The Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabuah, Chapter 4. And it came to pass that when we came together again to sit before the Urim, my eyes were still open to see into the souls of the Erekodeshi, and I heard a gentle voice, not unlike the Spirit of the Lord, but somehow it felt different. 
and I listened carefully to know where it was coming from, and it was coming from beneath my feet, and the voice said, I am Anahiel, the sweet dew of heaven, and I am the listener for Anakaste, and he depends on me to listen for him, for I am the body of the memory of God, and the Spirit said, she is the foremost listener upon the earth, and the first inscribed among them, and the consulting elder for listeners, and she will now speak to express the view of these things for Anakis. And the angel Anahiel began to speak, and in an ever so quiet voice, even as if it were the voice of Anakis himself, she said, Now I will bring to your mind the history of the awareness and learning of all the Erekodeshi and our pathway in our becoming. For we started out in our innocence and knowledge in exactly the same place as Yatsikat and Hava, yea, even in the same place as every newborn baby born among mankind. And as we came awake to be born in Eden, we came to view the objects of creation who are all the children of men as our dearly beloved ones. And at that time, it was just our first parents, and our love for them grew to feel the immensity of eternity, and that love, while being all in comparison to us, was expressed to them with us viewing them simply being just one of us. And we followed them out of Eden, not only because we loved them, but because our counsel informed us that Anarchists viewed us as their home, and all of us took great delight in being their home with each of us having our own part in how we loved them and cared for them to give them life. And when we moved into the temporal world and we witnessed the murder of Mataniah and we were first subjected to a knowledge of evil and then we began to realize that mankind was indeed the reason we were created and then we knew that we must safeguard righteousness and the fulfillment of why we were created lies with our steadfastness. To be diligent to express righteousness, even the definition that were given to us and the knowledge of our joinings that came from our loved ones in Eden. And in the course of those days, a war was entered into by the Dakar Darchi to try to make themselves the object of creation instead of men. And through all the course of the divisions of the earth, and the contributions of our ancient grandmothers in seeing the seven evil grandfathers, reference number 24, see chapter 7. And what they did, we began to come to a profound understanding of what it meant for us to be clinging to all the ways of Anarchist for the sake of his loved ones who are all his children of men. And we came through this period finding that we must make sure determinations in how we would conduct ourselves. And we did this being led by those among men who were holy in the examples of their lives. And we did this choosing these specific examples because of the second decree of creation. And when the earth was divided and the second decree came into full effect, our process of ordering our contributions of love for anarchists on behalf of man became fully formed and put into effect. And in this period, we made seven determinations on the side of goodness and purity and holiness and of love. And in this way, we sevened ourselves after the manner of the pattern of the agency of Anarchus. And our agency was thus set in place to only and always and forever choose those four qualities, never varying away one step. And likewise did the Dakar Darchi choose evil to follow after the ways of the wicked, and they also seven themselves with their evil choosings, to always and forever choose to follow the example of the wicked, never varying away one step. And in this way they became enemies to God, and to man, and to creation, and we are seen to be their enemies. And you will yet see Ben Elam the seer, that we have yet at this time in our history to come to our final expression as the home Anarchist has for man until we encountered the one who was called Melchizedek. And all the spirits of life and creation have three names. Anarchist is what the great Holy One calls himself, and we call him Father, and mankind calls him God, and we call the son of Noah Melchizedek. But man calls him Shem, and Anarchist calls him Mikael. And now that which will come before your eyes with Aram, 
will be the vision of our first great sevening as seen by anarchist and you will know what has been chosen by all the watchers of heaven in this process of sevening ourselves follows the pattern established by the first mother haba when she rose up in the dance seven times in the joys of her forgiveness and in this way has the foundation of the religion of all the erkodeshi been set in place and it is called the religion of shavua reference number 25 strong's concordance number 7620 and number 7651 and it came to pass that the vision of the first great sevening as seen through the eyes and hearts of the erkodeshi began to unfold before me through the urim and anahiel said the rebellion of the one-third of the watchers of heaven who fell was for them and for us who are faithful the first decision in the first great seventy and we chose to give ourselves to all the children of anarchist and love holding nothing back and we chose to view that goodness and wholesomeness to be a gift that brings life from anarchist to be treasured and much sought after as the means of preserving mankind but the Dakar Chi chose to hate man and to reject the reasons why anarchists created them, holding back no amount of effort to destroy their visions and replace them with one of their own choosing. Reference number 26, Genetic Engineering. And the Dakar Darshi chose to hold the view that goodness and wholesomeness were not desirable, but an encumbrance upon them and their desires. Reference number 27, gender disruption slash confusion and also that no one could conceivably desire such things and that goodness and wholeness are intrusions that are forced upon the unfortunate peoples of the earth and they also viewed the lives of man and the erico de she as deplorable and not to be worthy of consideration but who must be brought under control and in this way the dakar darchi asserted themselves to cut off mankind from their inheritance with Melchizedek and from any knowledge of their perfect selves. Reference number 28, Kobelski monograph, number 10, page nine through 10. And they did this in the hopes that mankind would wither away, being denied the help of Mozart, and that the children of Anakis would be fully alienated from him in the midst of chaos, and the Dakar Dashi would become the objects of creation. And the angel Anahiel continued, and I began to hear marvelous sounds that my heart delights in hearing, because I love the truth of Anarchist, and I heard the sounds of life, and I said, What is the importance for you of these sounds? And Anahiel said, Sounds and creation are the principal guiding force that fully motivates all of us, Erkodeshi. And being a listener, I am especially sensitive to sounds. So now I will teach you about sounds, for there are sounds of life and sounds of death. Both cause us to feel deeply either rejoicing or sorrowing, and we fully intend to act decisively on behalf of the children of Anarchist when we hear the sounds of death, and we readily join in the happy choruses to sing praises when we hear the sounds of life. And some sounds of life for anarchists are dripping rain and birds and song and prayers to anarchists and gurgling water and children playing and laughing in tender words of romantic love within the bounds of the sanctity of marriage and gentle winds and breezes and waves of the sea as they roll and tumble and the high tone of voice and a parent as they speak to their infant and songs of praise and joining and the drumming heartbeat of the earth and respectful greetings, and the wind singing in the trees, and the words of repentance before Mozart, our Redeemer, and too many more to recount. And the sounds of death for anarchists are loud arguing, and prayers of vengeance, and raucous music, and shouting, and deceptive words, and crying in distress, and feet running in fear, and the commands of armies mounting attacks, and the noise of weapons and the cracklings of the strange fires of destruction and hard words of accusation and words of lying and expressions of fear and sighs of dismay and the harsh disciplining of children and the silence of ignoring pleas and statements of submission to dominance and death cries and bragging and words of impatience and too many more to cite 
and man in their state of alienation easily hears the sounds of death and becomes so accustomed to them that they seem to be no threat and their ears are often closed to the sounds of life and their lack of virtue is that which stops up their ears and bad delighted in those sounds and he never before had heard sounds that he felt so attracted to and those sounds were the beginning of sorrows for man the ericodeshi and anarchists and bad may still be lying on that hillside where he landed yet to this day but because our love surrounded our first parents we passed over and the sounds of death were drowned out by the kind sounds of life found in the comforting words of mozart to them and because we spoke to their hearts by all of our sweet sounds the sounds of death came to be out of mind reference number 29 the first passover and it came to pass that with the passing time the people began to multiply and only yatsukat and haba had ever known the sounds of death that were brought to eden by bad but in the world came kenne whose name is called cain by the dakar dachi which name means to attack by chanting reference number 30 strong's concordance number 7013 7014 and 6969 and he would listen to sounds that others chose to ignore and those sounds were like whispering dark sentences and he learned from those voices how to strike out rapidly and chant the sounds of death that were filled with hate and violence and he chanted with clenched teeth and everyone was alarmed because he was doing such a strange thing and the sounds he made put chills into our souls and we were afraid and some of us thought that only someone born in eden could know the meaning of it and these new sounds were the sounds of death that had come from Sanasiol, even at this early time in the course of the earth and it came to pass that is was this first expression of sorcery that caused the meteorite to fall from the sky in broad daylight and it struck metaniah in the head and he fell down and died and anarchist knew that all sorcery is a direct assault upon him and all his longings for his children and we were confused about why he could not arise and come back to life and it was the first experience of mankind with the death of a person and it caused fear and chaos and the sounds of running feet and the cries and gasp of breath from viewing the horror of it and yet again the hills felt the running of feet in fear and the hills shuddered with revulsion and there was crying and wailing in the night and urgent questions asked in panic by the children and all these were the sounds of death and the wind cried and the clouds rang down the tears of anarchists and from that day on the sounds of death were planted on the earth in some form only to grow from the long duration and to increase through the ages and yatsikat went to see his son mataniah where he fell and he saw the meteorite that killed him and he said do not touch it it is just the same as the rock that fell from heaven into eden and he told them to never go to that place again and his son's bones lay upon the ground and were thereafter avoided by all and just like the meteorite that fell in eden that brought the sounds of death there no one would come near to the place of the death of mataniah again except bad and his hosts now used it as the place where they were given to celebrate their dominance over kine and awan and all the children of our ancient parents were never the same again and just like the one-third of the watchers of heaven fell away from their first station one-third of the children of our first parents fled away from nod never to return again and so from that day to this one it is sounds that move us to action and signal us to be alert to the needs of the children of anarchists and now arising out of the conditions that brought the first sounds of death into the temporal world were the conditions that would lead to the second decision in the first great seventing and from this time forward it is the view of the ericodeshi that bad and his hosts are the authors of the sounds of death and with all this a new and amazing change began to emerge among the children of men and you will see that it will turn out to be foundational to the power of all the forces of evil throughout all the course of the earth for it can be seen that those of the children of yatsukat whose spirits were joined with the presence of anarchists in the urko de reference number thirty one 
Shabua, were the ones who remained with their family in Nod, and they were the ones who put an effort into knowing them and communing with them and walking with them, and they thought only upon using them according to the spirit of life that had been put into them, and as a result, they had the exact same view of sounds as the Erekodeshi. And it came to pass that the people multiplied, and there began to be those who did not put the effort into knowing the Lord or Anarchist. And the original virtues began to wand, and with it a new subtlety began to be shown, and it was the desire to be satisfied. And those who were close to the Lord and creation were happily attached to the circumstances of their lives and all that occurred, and thus they lived in a culture of happiness with their father, and complaining was almost completely unknown. But the people noticed a change coming among some in their midst, and they were troubled, and there had not yet developed the knowledge of how to reprove in these instances, nor was there the language to do so, because like Anarchists, they could not anticipate evil, and the threat of dissatisfaction was not comprehended by anyone. And for those who dwelt upon their complaints, being unsatisfied, began to preside over their lives. And it took the form of being unsatisfied unless they had the biggest or the best of something, or if they did not have the skill at doing something that others had, and bad observed all this very carefully, and soon some wanted the satisfaction of status and the bestowal of honor, and those who felt this began to compare themselves to others in the same way as bad did when he crashed into Eden, as it has been recorded in the book of remembrance of Enoch. And so I see a wife who is not satisfied with her husband's ability to tan leather, and she chides him about it. And Kenneth was not satisfied with his wife, and he wanted another. And so when the sounds of death hung over the land like a shadow, the ones who wanted satisfaction could not find it. And the ones who wanted to be happily attached to the circumstances of their lives found the means to do so with contentment. And this is that which divided their children, so that some sought righteousness and some did not. And the angel and Nahiel continued, and she said, Bad put it into the hearts of any who would listen to him, that happiness can only come from satisfaction of many things, the satisfaction of dominance, of possessions, of recognition, of superiority, and the triumph over others. And Anarchist views any who seek satisfaction of those things to be lost and groping to find their way in an effort to find their home with him when he is their home and is right in front of them and he endures much sorrow because of this and it came to pass that out of this event of death there was one named emory who in her distress went out to walk upon a mountain so she could ask anarchist what to do and she knew to ask because of her faith and she knew how to listen because she was familiar with the presence of the father in the elements of creation. And we were surprised that she came to us in order to petition Anarchist. And she told us about the four spirits of life. And we learned this from her in the temporal world. And while the council of the watchers of holiness at the edge of eternity may have known of these four spirits, the rest of us were heavily impacted with the news to hear the view of Anarchist in the matter. And Anarchist asked us to perform a blessing for his children at the behest of one called Amikar. And we were very joyous to do it for him. And he asked us to consider ourselves to be the storehouse for the Holy Spirit. And we are to allow the spirit of Mozart that dwells in us to flow freely to all the humble and repentant who earnestly seek for answers from the Lord by his spirit. And it came to pass that this was a monumentous day for us that we will long remember and diligently fulfill all during the course of the earth. And in council together, we all came to the determination that we would choose to respect the oneness of Anarchist with every human soul. And in this way, the treasure of housing the spirit would be spread abroad in such a way that it would be as if Anarchist only had a voice to speak to each one. And because Anarchist is one, he does not have to give anyone an equal share of his spirit, but each and every one may receive it all, as though they are the only one he has to speak to. And in this way, his voice to them will fit perfectly with their need to hear. And the way they need to hear it 
that is sought by any single person who seeks him according to his way in the midst of the multitudes of the nations. But the Dakar Darchi chose to be the storehouse of the satisfaction of possessions, and they chose to establish the divisions of bad to deny agency. Thus the spirit of evil prospered, and war and racism and brokenness went rampant upon the earth before the face of Anarchus. So now with this second decision, we have determined with surety that we will always be joined to the children of Anarchus who love him, and we will be their constant companions, and we will be a ready resource as they walk among us to seek the Lord, and we will exude the spirit of the Lord which dwells in us to bless and guide them according to the will of the Lord, and we will find that the fulfillment of our creation comes only in our being able to contribute to the children of Anarchus becoming holy. And as I continued to look with Aram, I saw that Bad, who was the devil, did not know the meaning of the idea of having possessions, because he is a meteorite. And those who turned away from virtue taught him what it would mean for the Dakar Darshi to support and promote the pursuit of the satisfaction of possessions. And Bad was well pleased to learn these things because it brought divisions. And the evil ones have used their teachings to cause sin to prosper, starting with our first family and continuing on even to the present day. And countless numbers of human souls are living out their lives only to abandon every reason Anarchus had to create them. And they are wasting their precious gift of life following after the accumulation of wealth and the satisfaction of possessions with no prospect of ever being satisfied because there is never enough and after all they manage to gain, they are left empty and unhappy like a torn carcass left behind by vultures. And the angel Anahiel began to teach me much needed information and she said, the four fingers on the hands of the covenant tablet are viewed in different ways and it is instructed to learn how man and Moza and Anakis and ourselves prefer to find meaning in them. And these four views are pleasing to Anakis because they are an aid to understanding. And so now at this time, I will instruct you in these views. And first comes the preferred way to find meaning in the hand on the covenant tablet as seen by mankind. The preferred way they use them is to consider the four fingers represent the four directions and the righteous use them to find languages of repentance and glory and to remind themselves of the feelings there. As felt by both Moza and Anarchist, and they use them in purifications and in almost every aspect of their lives. And the righteous love the directions and respect them carefully in saying their prayers and in the way they face their houses. And Moza respects their view when he performs birthing worships in relation to the directions. And the meaning of the directions are carefully integrated in all their use of the element of righteousness. And even in their burials, the directions are used with respect. And so the entire course of the lives of men is formulated to respect that which Moza feels in each direction and what Anarchist would say from them to bring protection and enlightenment to his children. And the redeemed are ever grateful for their savior and redeemer because he does not measure the cost in going below all things for the wayward among them. And so it can be seen that how the righteous view the meaning of the fingers on the covenant tablet is essential for them to aid them in keeping their covenant. And to us, Erko Deshi, we prefer to view the meaning of the symbols of the fingers to point to the processes of becoming. And to us, we prefer to view them to be say, feel, do, and be. And this view is important to us because we have the task to be the home for mankind. While they are living out their expressions of agency, when we are constantly aware of how agency is used and decisions are made, because it is the process of expressing agency that is our gauge to look for the limits of our tolerance. And we can tolerate only so much, seeing the burden of Mosa, our loved one, is ours to bear with him. And while we do not measure the cost for ourselves, we have to be constrained when viewing his suffering, and we take our many duties very seriously. And for us, the use of agency is the foundation of all we do, for the wind to blow or the sun to shine. And agency defines for us why waters of the earth flow forth either to be much or little.
And we reckon that the sounds of life and the sounds of death all originate in that which is said or felt, or they come from that which is done. And most of all, those sounds represent what a society has chosen to be. And these things never leave our minds. And so we are ever watchful to see if agency is going the easy way or the hard way in stubbornness of heart. And we know that both salvation and redemption must follow the easy way of Moza the Lamb, because for him his guidance is easy and his burden is light for all those who are obedient. And Moza prefers to view the meaning of the fingers on the covenant tablet to represent the four orders of creation. And this is because of the covenant he made with his father concerning the structure and function of creation. And the orders of creation are central for him in accomplishing the fulfillment of his vision to be the messenger of salvation and the prince of righteousness that leads to redemption. And so it is essential for him that both salvation and redemption are able to preside upon the earth to promote and sustain the sanctity of marriage and the abundant life that comes from repentance in the daily walk of the righteous and the freedom to choose is respected. And importantly for him, that the feelings and desires of his father are shed abroad with profound effect in rescuing his children from sin and bringing them back home to him and Elda. And the burdens and Moza that he carries are all in relation to the four orders of creation and the success of his father's world all revolves around the structure and function of creation, relying wholly upon the vitality of those four orders. And when they come under attack, then he must call upon Mikael to help him and upon Geira to come to the aid of the world's righteous. Then he will constrain us no longer and the end of our tolerance is soon to arrive. And so Mosa is ever watchful to see to the orders of creation and all of his daily walk is determined by the prosperity or failure of the four orders of creation and all of us on the council of Elda stand by him in this as well as all those of the holy order and anahiel continued and she said i am one to speak for anarchist and he prefers to think of them as representing the four spirits of life in all creation and it is natural for a father who is filled with loving kindness to pay careful heed to the quality of life in his children and he ponders upon the lives of all the souls in creation and anahiel continued as she said the storehouse of the spirit of anarchist is a wellspring of the abundant life and it is the principal influence that brings spiritual rebirth and it seems that all the spirits of life in creation both among the images of god and in all the watchers of heaven since eden must be born again in order to find their rightful place in the arms of anarchist in the midst of the temporal world and being born again has two parts utilizing the very two spirits of life that entered into creation to transform olam into eden and these two spirits are the spirit and presence of moza and the visions of created purpose for each and every person born upon the earth and Anarchy sees all our rebirth to be his only hope for his children, returning to dwell with him in Elda, after seeing the use of their agency come to its fullness. And so we as the home of mankind come to our acts of service for him. And when a person walks among us to seek answers of understanding of the truth in their repentance, we know and hold in reserve a true knowledge of their perfect self, and an awareness of the forgiveness of Moza can issue forth to them from out of our storehouse, which holds a clear expression of our view of their vision. And when the spirit of Moza in us is able to speak to them, to reveal to them how much Anarchist loves them, then they begin to learn what it means to them. And after experiencing moments of profound forgiveness, they will make a choice as to whether they will become determined to live out their lives in the newness of forgiveness and when their choice is to fulfill all of his desires for them, then the first part of being born again occurs, and they are ready to enter into the covenant of water baptism. And thereafter, they may partake of the holy drink. And all this comes about when we are able to impart and restore in them the spirit of Moza that had entered into them in the first place, causing them to become a living soul. And when the spirit of life in us, that is their vision, is sought by them, then we are able to reveal to them specific aspects of why Anarchist created them and their joys of life and confidence in who they are 
leads them to know of what they mean to Anarchist, and they begin to choose to give their lives to him, making efforts to be who he created them to be. Then the second part of being born again occurs, and they are ready to expand their covenant and be baptized with fire and Holy Spirit, and they, after they make partake of the holy food. And now their rebirth in their personal covenant with Moses is complete, and they can affirm it from time to time with a holy meal, and respect of life in the wine, holds the remembrance of why you love him, and with the holy drink, his compassionate forgiveness comes to you with the assurance that he is for you, your messenger of salvation, and the wine then is the element of righteousness to announce to your soul the truth of your fresh newness in him. And the spirit of life and the bread holds the remembrance of what you mean to him. And with the holy food, a true sense of fulfillment in your redemption comes to you with the assurance that you and your father are doing well in your walk, in the way together. And the knowledge of the love of father settles in your heart when you endure in your determination to give your life to him. And because your rebirth is complete, you now may know more fully just what you have to give to him with the gift of your life. And such awareness is called the abundant life. And the bread is the element of righteousness to magnify your source of fulfillment, which only the redeemed can know. And so Anarchus keeps careful watch with his father's tender heart to provide for you every needful thing in accomplishing your walk with him in the midst of the temporal world. And while infants and small children can feel and see anarchist and his truth, sin corrupts and threatens this truth. And these two spirits must come to be reinstalled in you to bring you to being born again. And all of this was a lot for me to ponder. And Anahiel said, Emory is one who taught how to utilize these four spirits of life to best aid you in your walk with anarchists. And when she said this, immediately before me comes Emory, and she is teaching a group of people, and she is older now than when I last saw her, and she is much more impressive in her authority and her ability to speak words of distinction. And she said, I will teach you how to utilize these four spirits of life that dwells in all of us and in all the Erechotes sheep. When there is chaos among our people, you must seek the Erechotes sheep, for they have no chaos. And when you do, the spirit of understanding will come to you. And some of the people did not understand. So she went before the Lord and asked for guidance in the matter. And the spirit said to her, use the man who is in all things. And she said, Lord, who am I that I should bring knowledge to the people? And the Lord said, you have authority to teach the people and I will guide you in that which you should say. And she arose from her prayers with new confidence that I had never seen in her. And she began to teach about how to use the four spirits of life. And she held up her hands so they could be used to illustrate her teachings. And she said, the four spirits of life and you are standing side by side, just like the four fingers of your hands. And going clockwise, starting on your right side, your little finger represents the Erechotishi or the definitions of life. And the next one is for anarchist. And the third one is for Mosa. And your index finger means your vision of created purpose. And this is how you use the spirit of man in them when you are troubled and have a need for an answer from the Lord or to be enlightened to understand. First, seek out the serenity and stability of the Erechotishi. This is the start of a little journey with the four spirits of light, and each one leads to the other. So in this case, at the end, the Comforter can come to you to teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. And your quiet walk with the Erechotishi will draw you close to Anarchist, and you will feel a portion of his vast love for you. And that love will affect you to desire to want to please him, and pleasing him magnifies your desire to humbly embrace the repentance of Moza. And the spirit of repentance causes the vision that the man took with him into the Erechotishi to be released. And another comforter comes to you to teach you and inform you according to your need. And a new part of your soul has come home in your vision. That is, you see how Anarchist has defined you in your purpose for living, is enlarged before your eyes and in your soul, and coming home is the essence of redemption. And after having taught all these things, Emory began to prophesy and she said, 
all four of the spirits of life are thinking, feeling, doing, and being. And their souls are beacons of the truth, and that which they say is holy. And someday they will be seen to be a storehouse of heavenly guidance. And over the course of the long duration of the earth, Anarchus will have multitudes of his children blessed by these four spirits of life. And what they speak to the heart of man will be the one and only link righteous people will have with the abode of Anarchist and Elda. And in this way, faith will remain in the earth during every age of time. And the truth will bind the children of Anarchist to their gift of life and the fullness of it. But when you feel unclean and distant from the Lord, you must walk on your journey the other way. And on the salvation side, you start with your vision. And uncleanness and feeling distant from the Lord caused you to have the need to feel forgiven. And feeling forgiven is sometimes very hard. And at those times, starting with repentance for some shortcoming in your vision will lead you to an encounter with your Savior. And repentance and true confession to him will restore you to Anarchist and refresh in you your obedience. And then the Ercode is she can come to you with a sense of your perfect self, which they hold, and you will feel forgiven. And the joy of your salvation and feeling forgiven is the essence of salvation. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabua, Chapter 4. Shalom. The Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabua, Chapter 5. And it came to pass that we once again gathered to record the vision, and when placing the Urim upon the Thummim, the vision was immediately before my eyes, and I was at the upper pool in Nod, at the dwelling place of our first parents. And their home was a cavity in a rock, and it was in a cliff between two waterfalls. And they raised all their children there, all 34 of them, which number includes the three children of their son Mataniah, who was slain. And there was a constant sound of water cascading down and gurgling over stones. And the stream was small enough and fell such a short way that their dwelling place was not filled with mist. And the water of both falls fell from just a little farther up than a tall person could reach. And the distance between the falls was about 100 paces, so that the pool at the west end was tranquil. And the opening of their dwelling was on the north side, with the small stream running east to west between the falls. So the sunlight of a new day came to shine directly upon them late in the morning. And I see a little lad, and he is well built. And like all the ancient people, his arms are round and smooth without rippling muscles. Yet they were strong, and this lad appears to be about ten years old. And he is the seventh son of Yatsikad, and I see that he is greeting the dawning light with his prayers to Anarchus. And he is sprinkling some element of worship from his fingers upon the ground to thank Moza for the joy of a new day. And he is thanking the sun for being ever faithful, and I can feel that he is making determinations about the course of his new day, and by the looks of it, this is his daily practice. And after he is done, I can see him going over to where the clear, pure water falls over the brink into the lower pool, and right where the water curves over to spill over the edge, he is kneeling down upon a flat stone, and with more prayer, he puts more element upon the water, and I am very moved by what I feel as he does this because he is asking Moza, the living water, to accompany him all through his day. And I am struck at watching him sprinkle the element upon the water as it rolls over the edge because it looks exactly like how the edge of eternity looks as the love of Anarchus spilled over the edge of eternity and it felt just the same. And remember, it was on that very occasion in Elda where Moza first received his name. And I could plainly feel with this little son what he actually felt when he cupped his hands to drink, for in his heart it was a living example of what he felt with the forgiveness of his Redeemer. And the cool, refreshing, and comforting feeling in the drink of water is giving him life and abundance. And every time he drinks throughout the day, it is a reminder of who is going with him all day long. And even though he is young, 
He is very strong in his spirit, and I marveled at the sight of it. And it is important to understand that the water to this lad is the element of righteousness that will magnify in his soul, in his ability to be patient, to listen throughout his day, and his ability to listen applies to the Lord, the ear she, and his fellows. And he considers if he did not do this each and every day that he would find himself separate and alone from those voices that guide him in his daily walk. And because he is a boy who will grow to become a man, his focus and conscious awareness is pointed toward that which is going forward and outwardly in his influencing others. For them to be loved and respected and the spirit of his innocent love is thus released. To move out to encompass all who he encounters and in the midst of the air coat is she, both in the present moment and in the future in like manner as the flowing water. And as I look at him and am able to see and feel all these things, I am amazed at how one so young could be so holy and righteous. And in that moment, I am able to hear his name and he is named Zakar. Reference number 32, Strong's Concordance number 2142. Because he desires to be mindful of the Lord and always remembers him and he sees Moza and his love for him to be the reason he performs every task, and the spirit of his holy presence is his guide in all he would say in his daily walk. And it came to pass that I sat pondering this for a few moments, and I marveled at the power of this little lad, and the spirit caused me to discern that Zakar longed with a strong desire to see and know more of the spirits of life and creation, and he wanted to come to understand concerning the living presence of Moza, the lamb in them, and because of this, I see that Yatsikat took little Zakar with him on a long journey. And it seemed unusual to me because Yatsikat was not a traveler. And so it felt like he was doing this, especially to teach his son the righteous longings of his heart. And Yatsikat taught only that which he himself was taught in Eden, regarding how to use the spirits of life that were put into all things, and to not vary away from all those expressions of what he called the living love of Anakis. And it came to pass that they set out on their journey, and I wondered how they would provide for themselves, seeing Yaatsikot was not a hunter. And I saw that they followed the little stream of their encampment of Nob, down to where it joined to a larger stream that went down toward the river Simca. And further on, they came to a place where two larger streams came together to form the Simca River proper that runs into Aral Sea. And the low-lying flatlands there were filled with game birds and fish in abundance. And the marshy places held an abundance of roots and seeds to eat. And it was the intention of Yatsika to teach his little son Zakar righteousness and the holy relationships with the spirit of life and creation and a holy relationship with the Lord and the elements in creation. And I am surprised at what I see with Yatsika and also crucially informed because I see him doing exactly what he did when he helped transform Olam into Eden. And somehow I had it in my mind that he only defined the elements of creation then at that time. And after Eden was formed, he stopped defining and entering into element together with his spirit and with the presence of most of the lamb. But now I see him doing the same thing here with his little son in the temporal earth. And Yatsikot is filled with the presence of Moza, and they literally walk together. And also Yatsikot is filled in his own right with a great presence of love for all life. And every new thing that he came across, he reaffirmed the presence and condition of Eden in it with his love. And in this way, he comforted the Erkota she in the temporal world. And it occurred to me that we could do the very same thing to this day. And we too can speak to the many Urkodeshi and reaffirm the presence of their creator in them and communicate and act upon the presence of our own visions in them to delight their hearts and to remind them of the desires of anarchist and creation. And this is important because the wicked can, with many repetitions of their cold and empty acts, cause a shadow to creep over them to obscure their awareness of the love that they were created to express and obscure their joy in their fulfillment. 
And all along their journey, I saw him doing the same thing. And I saw him looking at some billowing clouds drifting along, having beautiful shades of blue, white, and gray. And Zakar was watching too. And upon viewing Yatsikov gazing at them, I could discern that he knew he lived in those clouds, together with Anarchist and Moza. And he said to Zakar, I wonder what Anarchist is doing as he passes by looking down upon us. And Zakar said, He is loving all that he sees with a gentle tenderness, without any distinction between the good or the evil. And because Zakar had used his element with the dawning sunlight and the water, his ability to be patient and to listen was magnified and his father used very few words. And his vocabulary was limited to only the words of Anakis spoke to him in Eden. And I think he tried to avoid learning any new words from others during his life in an attempt to retain what he felt in Eden. But Zakar could hear both what his father was saying and feeling, and the soul of Zakar was enlarged. And it came to pass that Zakar desired greatly to see where the stream of his dwelling place went on its journey, and he asked, Does its journey ever end? And they traveled on, clear to the marshes on the north side of the Aral Sea. And Zakar was able to see where the brook Simca entered into the sea, and he exclaimed, Look, father! The brook is entering as if to go into eternity, and it can rest from its traveling at last. And after those days in Ma'in, in the eyes of the people, Zakar became a real clear example of what it meant to be clean. And since ancient times, the concept of being clean means to feel with and be joined in your soul with most of the land and his presence in the elements of the earth that gives them life for you. And clean is still defined in this way by the communities of the righteous and by the people of the Lord. And being clean is also associated with water because the name of the man that Anarchist became is Moza, which name means the living water. And that is why baptisms and washings have more meaning to the righteous than merely being temporally clean in their physical bodies for the living water cleanses the soul. And it came to pass that I continued to look with Urim and I can see that Zakar came to marry a wonderful maiden named Rahi, reference number 33, Strong's Concordance number 7209, pronounced Rahi. And she was his sister, and she was the twelfth child of Hava, and she is the feelings of the heart of her husband made flesh. And I see her also sprinkling element while standing facing the dawning light in preparation for her encounter with the sun in order to commence with her day. And she too joins with the water each day as she greets the Lord. And instead of using the water with element like Sakar, she looks at her reflection in the water. And I'm startled at what she feels as she does this, for I would have assumed that she would be seeing how she looked by her reflection in the water. But instead she considered that she could see that she lived in the water with Moza, and her perfect self lived there. And that is to say, that the person she was created to be lived there with the Lord. And this awareness would urge her to always be repentant, so she could remain close to her perfect self, because it is the view of her that comes from forgiveness that forms her image in the water. But in the world, when a person views their reflection, the only thing that comes to mind is the image of you as seen by others. And such images draw you to desire to conform to the sensitivities of society rather than to how Mosa views you. Therefore, it behooves the righteous to avoid mirrors and such images. And this was, again, exactly what her father Yasekad felt when he considered the definition of his spirit of life and creation. And sweet little Rehi put element on the water so that she could draw inward through her eyes the feelings of the truth and most of the lamb, and she drank him in with her eyes. As she drank the water in her hand, and drinking water out of a hand is to drink in your perfect self. And when drinking from the two cupped hands of your spouse, it means to drink their soul into yours. And it can also be done with a dear friend in the Lord. And for her, the cool, refreshing taste and feeling of the water reminded her to be happily attached to the circumstances of her day. And to her, it was the element of righteousness 
to enlarge her patience during an uncomfortable or undesirable task so that she would always see into the lives of others and allow the Erico to she to aid her in her understanding and so she could be wise in all her ways. And she drank in the feelings of forgiveness for both herself and as she forgave others and the living water entered into her and gave life to a mother who was a giver of life. And I could see that this wonderful couple, when they were married using the rocks of the brook Simca, purposefully, diligently, and intelligently drank in Mosa every day. And a marvelous thing came before my eyes, for I saw the example and practice of these two people burst forth to become the founding principle of that which the entire people of Ma'in practice in their powerful acts of righteousness in their daily lives. And the spiritual power of these two children permeated their entire world. And thus, little children led the righteous people of Ma'in before the flood. And it came to pass that Hava took Rehi on a journey up upon Reshani to teach her what it meant to be a woman and a daughter of the mountain. And Rehi beheld the headwaters of the brook Simca that held the image of her perfect self. And Rehi called the mountain grandmother. And she gazed down at the far reaches of creation and saw the vastness of life that came from her. And the soul of Rehi was enlarged. And it is a joy to record that I see Rahi teaching the other girls what to feel when they look into the still water. And I see them laughing together and being very happy. And the girls would tap the reflection of one another with a twig. And they would exclaim their delight that the forgiveness of Moza would bring the image of their perfect self back together again as the water settled down again. And it came to pass that Zakar and Rahi went on to have a large and happy family. And it looks to me like there must be more than 12 children. And among their sons, there was one named Bar, reference number 34, Strong's Concordance number 1250, because he knew how to speak loving kindness to the Asib, reference number 35, ancient name for wheat, so that it prospered and grew in abundance. And he married a daughter of Emery of Nod, who was a daughter of Mataniah, who was slain. And her name was Rika. Reference number 36. Strong's Concordance number 7347. Because it was prophesied at her birth that she would be the elder among women and how to make excellent bread out of very finely ground flour. Because it is the element of righteousness that shows forth the salvation that comes from Moza. And she highly prized her kelly, which is the stone in which she cooked her bread. And bar, reference number 37, Strong's Concordance number 1250, whose name means to win a wheat, together with Rekha, followed in all the ways of their parents, and they were stalwarts among the people in Ma'in. And it came to pass that Rekha gave birth to twin sons, and one was named Zanak, and the other was named Shub. And Zanak came out first. And Zanak married a daughter of Yakol, who was left behind in her father's haste to escape the trauma and fear of the murder of Mataniah. And she was just a little thing. And her name was Didi. Reference number 38. Strong's Concordance number 1768 and number 1669. And she was very injured by being left behind and profoundly affected by it. And Grandmother Rihi raised her, and as she grew into adulthood, she desired to assert herself to control others so that she may never again be abandoned. And it came to pass that she and Zanak began to have children and to face the normal pressures of life, and Zanak began to be influenced by the feelings of the need to be satisfied. And those feelings were how bad plied his wayward feelings upon him, indeed being the feelings of his heart made flesh became strong to want things around her, to give her a sense of security from want and abandonment. And she continually had bad dreams of being cast out empty. And when Zanak and Didi began to express dissatisfaction, those of the residents of Nod became perplexed and could not understand. And they looked upon such sentiments with wonder. And Zanak and Didi began to feel ashamed. And they felt alone in Nod in their desires for satisfaction. 
which comes from demanding the complete and immediate fulfillment of a need or a want. And temporal things cannot fulfill a spiritual or emotional need. And it came to pass that Zanak heard tales of his grandfather Zakar about the place where the two streams joined to form the river Simca, and of the bounty there of fish and waterfowl and hunting game. And it came to pass that after Zanak scouted out the way, he removed his family from Yod and traveled there with their children, and they set up camp and had to learn how to make their dwelling out of reeds. And they established themselves there all alone. And Didi suffered in her loneliness and insecurities from being abandoned. And Zanak was not able to listen so he could hear what she felt because he never did use any element upon the water. And before spring, they had established a settlement there and they named it Radath, reference number 39, Strong's Concordance number 7291. And it was a hunting and fishing camp. And they heard bad whispering in their ears that they could find the satisfaction of possessions by laying claim over the land round about to own it and the earth itself and the rivers could belong to them. And Zanak was a very skilled hunter and travelers who passed by soon spread the word abroad about how easy it was to live there and how abundance could come to them there and that they did not have to share. And I saw that Didi felt secure with the idea of owning the land. And she felt that she could never be abandoned again, but all would be bound to the land. And it came to pass that soon others gathered there who also were intent upon pursuing the satisfaction of possessions. And when they arrived, Zanak was the boss. And he would allow them to hunt and fish, but he had to be given his small part. And they did not mind giving a portion to him because they did not have to share the rest. And everyone owned their own things and nothing was shared nor was it lent, and competition was first seen in the land, and Bad was delighted to learn of it, and it became an important tool of his in his promotion of dominance over your fellows. And Zanak became known as the chief of Radath, and he began to be lifted up in his own eyes, and Bad found a new way to prosper when he learned to prey upon insecurities, and the cruel sin of abandonment caused his domain to expand, and magnify tribulations in their world. And Radath began to be a notable settlement, and people began to gather there, until upward of 60 or 70 people lived there. And soon word spread that there was a settlement in the Simca Valley that had a chief who was able to live off of the labors of others, and all who lived there did whatever he did, and one could get ahead of others there to find honor. And now Enoch, who was the son of Kenneth, who had murdered his brother, heard of the camp called Radath, and he had a son named Irad. And Enoch grew up without a father, because his father abandoned his mother, Awan, after they went down into Helia. And Enoch was without companions, and his mother, Awan, was very wicked in all her desires, and Enoch was lonely. And when Enoch heard of Radath, it was very appealing to him, that there could be such a place and that it had a chief and Enoch desired to live with others, especially if they would obey him, because then he would have the satisfaction of dominance and he would never be alone and all his companions would always do his bidding so that he may never be found to be of little repute. And so Enoch sent his son Irad to visit Radath and he expected him to report back about how such a gathering could be accomplished. And Irad came to Radath, and he presented himself as simply someone who wanted to live there. And his grandfather, Kenan, never would have done this, because his only desire in his shame was to be alone. But Bad was able to tempt Enoch in his sin, because he was raised without a good father, who would teach him confidence in his manhood. And it was among the first consequences of the injury of fatherlessness in the earth and the Erko that she grieved because they never could have anticipated how someone with a father would behave nor what kind of person they would turn out to be. And Bad looked upon all this with keen interest. And it came to pass that Irad spent a season in Radaf spying on them and he conducted himself in the same way as any other resident there, and Bad was able to add a new dimension to the act of lying. 
and I read learned all about the satisfaction of possessions and of how the desire for possessions could allow one who wanted to be prominent to find dominance over his fellows, and he learned how to express dominance, starting with laying claim to the land and to all it contained, and he learned that Zanak and Didi did not have to work, but lived on their portion of the hunt, and Irad was taken by how happy Didi was, and he had it on his mind to find a woman like her to be his wife and do much of his work for him. And after the fall harvest, Irad returned to Enoch, his father, with the news, and he reported that Enoch could well establish himself with such a settlement in the richness of the lands north of the Shaman Sea. And thus was the first city come into being, and it was called the city of Enoch. And after a while, Enoch sent people down to Radaf with enticing news of the bounty to find in his city. And there were stories of grandeur and wealth with much provisions for each person. And by these means, he lured away almost all of those who had settled at Radaf. And soon Zanak and Didi were left alone, and they had to work. And now their labor was dreary for them, and life became bitter with no one to oversee. And the children cried, and the air Kodeshi grieved, and Mosa found his burden. And it came to pass that a traveler brought word to Shub, that his twin brother now dwelt all alone and was in distress, and Shub and his wife Dara, reference number 40, Strong's Concordance number 1873, 1862, and 1843, knew that Didi would suffer once again with the terrible feelings of abandonment, and Shub and Dora were filled with love, and they were wise with the leadings of the spirit of Mozart, and this wisdom and understanding was able to come to them because she looked to understand, and he was careful to listen. And she was named Dara because she was charitable and diligent to look to understand. But most of all, she was named Dara because she was diligent to see reflected in the water, the perfect self of others that dwelt in the living water. And she would always assume the best of Didi, to think pleasant and loving thoughts about her. And her soul shone forth with the light of understanding. And Didi sank into the distress of her many trials, and Zanak began to be oppressed with shame. And thus we can see how bad can lead the souls of men to the brink of despair by magnifying their injuries and weaknesses, and in this way cut them off from the strength to be gained by being joined to the presence of Moza that resides in the Urkodeshi and in one another. And there was accusations and dissensions and the sounds of death that reached into the hearts of those in heaven. And the hills surrounding Radaf mourned, and the waters of Simca were dismayed, and the sounds of death drove away the migrating birds, and the spirits of life there did not express the joy of living. And it came to pass that the Urkodeshi reported all this to Shub, and he felt the hills feeling empty of the happiness of the feet of his brother, and the wind languished to speak to Didi with the breath of God. And Shub and Zanak looked exactly alike. And I see the family of Shub packing up all their things. And they have many children. And they each have little bundles. And this precious little family all set out to rescue Zanak and Didi. And I have to say it is quite a sight to see so many children all in a line bobbing along with their little bundles. And it is notable for me to say here that Shub did not intend to just go alone to reprove his brother and urge him to repent and return home to his starting place because Shub and Dara were wise and they did not measure the cost and they could discern how hard it would be for one with shame to repent and be humble but they chose instead to go and live with them to bring them the comfort of companionship and to love them back into righteousness and back home to Nod into their rightful place before anarchists and when they arrived they moved into an abandoned dwelling and the sounds of life began to be heard once again in Radaf, and the wind danced with joy once again over the plain and across the hills, and the children laughed and played, and the migrating birds stopped over their long journey, and the Erkodeshi shooed the Darkardeshi away, and they said to them by the voice of the thunder, Get ye hence, this is holy ground, because the hills love the steps of freedom. And the river Simca can be seen to be the body of Anakis, 
and his ability to nourish his children once again. And smiling faces were seen again. And the spirits of life and creation spoke softly of repentance to Zanak and Didi. And the gentle love of Anakis invited them back to their visions. And the rich spirit of reproval presided and gently covered the settlement. Now when the company from North arrived, they brought gifts of food and clothing and little things the children had made. And they stayed through the fall and winter. And those two seasons worked the wonders of their definitions to contribute their part and fall fell, gathering to their family. And winter feels resting together with each other. And Anakis looked on from the passing clouds and he saw that hearts were healed with love. And Zanak repented mightily before the Lord, drawing strength from his brother. And he was born again to know what Anakis meant to him. And sweet forgiveness had its effect. And he was born again into salvation with the undeniable love of Anakis that issued forth from the family of his brother. And now he would never let loose of what Anakis meant to him. But Didi took longer because of her injuries. And at Nod, she had healing ceremonies. And in time, she was healed and restored by unceasing and enduring love. And the vision of her created purpose was able to come to her by her obedience when she learned to view her perfect self in the water. And in the spring, they all arrived back in Nod. And it was not like a prodigal son coming to his bitter end with no alternative but to return home because Zanak and Didi were sought after and followed into their abyss with love and love found them and they returned home back to life. Reference number 41. This is foundational to how the righteous will serve the Lord during the great gathering. And it is said that the family of Zakar and Rehi are known as the family of deliverance. And the grandparents of cleanliness and the waters of Nod bore fruit in them. And it was made known to me that their family was among the first to return to Eden after their old parents. And I can see an interesting thing both the Erekodeshi and the Dakar Darchi learned very providential lessons. And the Dakar Darchi learned that they could collect people to follow them who could be controlled by their strong pursuit of the satisfaction of possessions, making it possible for the wicked to extend power and control over them so the wicked could obtain the satisfaction of dominance, and it was called a city. And the city of Enoch, son of Kenne, was the first city upon the earth to express this tool of evil. And the Erko did she learn that the righteousness of Zakar and Rehi to walk with the Lord each and every day became the guiding light for communities. And even as children, they led the way in Mayim. And the Erko did she learn the difference between cities and the countryside with villages, camps, and settlements. And that which Zakar and Rehi did in righteousness became a sure example for communities, and thus little children led the people of Nod and Ma'im. And it had remained to this day that the righteous will daily follow most of the Lamb in all their dwelling places wherever he leads with his spirit. And the Erko Dishi decided that they would never allow this foundation to be supplanted during all the course of the earth. And this is the third decision of the first great seventy. And they chose to embrace the people in their simple love, in communities, with their sharing and selfless loving kindness, one towards the other. And they decided that the possessions of any among the righteous, who had all things in common, would consist only of that which Anarchist gave them, to reveal and sustain their visions of created purpose. And by this it can be seen that the gifts of parents to their children should be intended to magnify their visions to help enable them to be raised up to live their lives, to fulfill the desires of anarchists for them, and possessions are not to be given them that reinforce the satisfaction of possessions. And in the third decision of the first grade 70, the Dakar Chi chose to establish cities with the honor that comes from personal ownership of wealth, even to the point of owning the earth and becoming merchants of men. And they were cunning with this choice because it was determined by them that by the satisfaction of possessions, multitudes would live out their lives pursuing that which would leave people empty, unhappy, and unfulfilled with wasted lives. 
having rejected their real gift of life, and they would have abandoned every expression of the expectations for them in the gentle heart of anarchists. And with the ensuing dominance of the few over the many, the earth saw poverty, sorrow, and jealousy, and violence abound among the wicked, and the sounds of death drowned out their gift of life among them. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabuah, Chapter 5. Shalom.